Well, hello, hello, Beliefflings. Well, hello. Welcome back to the hole. Yeah, episode 31, season finale. Season finale, guys. Get it. <laughs> In case you guys didn't know, we are now officially ending our first season. We were just going to do numbers. We were just going to do one, two, a thousand, ten thousand, mm. just so we could say, hey, it's episode 10,000, which would be awesome. But I think it makes sense to break it up in seasons so we can so we can put a stamp on it. We can measure point. our progress, too. Yeah, yeah we mm-hmm. can switch up some of the thing, elements we do with the show. What do you guys think out there in listener land? Should we... Would you be willing to go back to older seasons and listen to old stuff? Or would you feel like, hey, these are dated and time stamped? Yeah. I think it would be it would be cool with it. I mean, because really all of our episodes are, are topic based. There's no yeah. they're kind of timeless. Mm-hmm. You know. Unless like the aliens land, then there's no more conjecture about like aliens. Were these aliens? <laughs> what are what are we why are we doing it though? What was the is there a main reason that we're gonna do seasons? Yeah, the main reason is so that we could if we wanted to switch up elements or do different things with the show. For instance, we may be changing up the intro a bit. We know some of you guys really oh, like the intro. Right. Yeah, no, that would be cool. We're going to keep the skeleton of the intro. We're going to keep the spirit of it. We're just going to add. We're going to add and and change because just to keep it fresh yeah. for our own sake. Swap too. out some topics inside the intro so that yeah. we can give you a preview of what's coming up. We like here. to keep things fresh for you here. That's on the, the belief uh, hole. That's the goal. We like to keep our hole fresh. You got to keep it fresh. <laughs> Already dirty. It, it feels a little more cinematic to me. It feels a little more um, imaginative, more storytelling. Yeah, exactly. If you have a new season. But happy Halloween. But oh, happy. yes. Also, by the way, episode 31 happens to land not on Halloween, but our Halloween episode. Wow, I didn't even think about yeah, that. So Episode 31, season finale, and it's our Halloween episode, guys. So light those jack-o'-lanterns. Super. Yeah, turn those lights down, guys. We're turn about those lights to get down. scary in here. Turn the candle. Turn the candles on. Turn the candles on. <laughs> turn the candles on. <laughs> Paint your circle of protection, because we're about to get creepy. This episode is going to focus on some listener-submitted stories. True ghost stories, true stories, maybe some dabblings of gremlins. Some, mm-hmm. uh, got some forest monsters. Some forest monsters, some weird stuff. We've got I stories. Was, okay. We've got, <laughs> what? I thought it was ghost stories. It is ghost stories, but it's also just freaky, weird schnaz. And tonight, we've got some stories that no one has heard to this day because they are submitted from friends, from listeners, and some of them are the weirdest, yeah. uh, freakiest stories, that, and some connect to things we've covered in the past in a, in a crazy way, which we'll get to. Yeah, and for all the local listeners out there, it'll be a special treat because we're going to be discussing some local area hotspots of strange experiences, strange experiences in Ohio, in our little town. Oh, yeah, are we going to are we gonna out ourselves in our town? Not our town, maybe, but our area? I think we could. I mean, I don't want like a death warrant. <laughs> a death warrant? We have a warrant for your death. That's not the right word. Uh, death threat. I was joking, but what's the word, what's the word when they like cowboy days? Yeah, warrant. warrant. Well, warrant for your arrest. Wanted dead or alive? A death something. Where like they want a price on your dead. head. But yeah, they got a, a death warrant. Isn't right? It'd be funny you walk into like the Canabo Lounge and they're like we're looking for the belief hole guy. Some guy <laughs> in a trench coat. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like the Men in Black. The men in Black show up. Ooh. Yeah, I think we're pretty low on the list of wanted when it comes to. Uh, Conspiracy yeah. theorists. But some of the best paranormal. stories we got uh, are from listeners. And because we started in this area, a lot of our listeners are based in Ohio and are spreading out. And some of the best stories we got are from right here near our hometown of Canal Fulton, Ohio, Norton area, Clinton. It's kind um, of a magical little spot. It is. It's got a lot of woods. It's very remote. No, it's not remote, remote, but it's like there's it's rural. a small town. Like it's about as small town as you can get. Hilly valleys, all mm-hmm. that stuff. Yeah, we got we got canyons, we got nooks, we got uh, hollows, we got canals, we got canals, we got history. It's an old town. And now, just to make everything perfect for tonight, we've moved the studio into oh, John's yeah. new house. I have a new house, everybody. This is great. We'll have pictures in the show notes of the studio and stuff, but this is uh, will we? We will. And this is perfect for Halloween. This house was built in, do you know the exact year? 1892, I 1892. believe. 1892. Oh, so, that's when Columbus sailed the ocean blue plus 400 sh- years. It's also uh, 100 years before. <laughs> plus 400 years. 100 years before second grade for me, um, which is key. Wow. <laughs> which is definitely <laughs> which is key. key. That was um, a good grade. But this yeah. is a new spot we're in and uh, looking forward to some good times in here, I think. Yeah, it's going to be great because it has, you know, listeners out there imagine like, you know, your typical 1800s home in middle America, that sort of farm look. To farmhouse? The farmhouse kind of look to it. Um, but beautiful house. It's Victorian, I think, isn't it a little bit? Victorian's earlier. That's is like it? Lynch's. That's Centennial, like, is that right? Colonial. Colonial, I guess maybe 
words. Uh, it's words. a word. Yeah. <laughs> but no, um, it's it's perfect for tonight, and I'm glad we got in here for our for our season finale episode. It feels it just feels good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and sorry, the reason why we've been kind of s- slow to release, I think we're pretty much on schedule, but I think we're a week behind. Are we? Yeah. This transition getting into this new we're space. We're always transitioning, it seems I know. like. But now we are permanent for a while. Yeah, this is gonna be a good place to create some good content, good stuff here and, and faster for you guys. Yeah, yeah. So it is Halloween. So hopefully you guys are are getting ready for um Sam Hain, or is it's I always thought it was pronounced Sawin, but I guess it's Saw Pagan. It's Sawin? Sawin. Yeah. Finally that veil we've been talking about thinning and lifting is, is are you excited much, about the thinning? I am very excited. I'm a little concerned. Why? <laughs> Why? I don't know. I don't know that I want to be next to a thinning opening to a, a veil. And so the magic removed. happens. The hocus pocus practical magic magic or the uh, <laughs> demons are coming through and eat my soul magic because <laughs> there is a difference and I prefer. Yeah, one the, has Sandra Bullock and Sarah Jessica Parker and the other has the devil. Yes. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> that microphone really picks up my subtle it does. giggles. Hmm. But yes, it is Halloween, guys. And uh, I think our last episode is pretty, pretty creepy. So this oh, yeah, should well, we, be... We've kind of been in the Halloween spirit mm-hmm. for sure because we wanted to enjoy that. Because that's, you know, our show is paranormal conspiracy, but it's about the the fringe and the creepy. And Halloween is the one holiday that really shines a light on that. Exactly. And it's nice because I haven't had a reason to celebrate Halloween for a long time. You don't really do that unless you have a family or like a significant other or like friends around a lot. Is this Chris Depression Hour? <laughs> <laughs> but with the show, like I actually get to really get into the Halloween spirit and like, you know, do ghost stories, research creepy things like Black Eyed you Kids. You can go and, trick-or-treating if you really want. You know, I, I don't think about anybody it. would care that I could much. Be, I could go as an old <laughs> man, a tall kid yeah. with a mask. They wouldn't know. Anyway, uh, thank you for everybody who submitted some spooky stories. We really appreciate that. And mm-hmm. uh, we will have some that didn't get into this episode and we'll be doing over the next, maybe not the very next episode because we're going to start the new season off with something, maybe get back and do a Roots of Conspiracy a little bit or a little alternative history. Mm-hmm. Yeah, or, some fringe. Yeah, who yeah. knows? But we're probably going to take a little break from the creep, creep right. episodes. Yeah. But we will hang on to those, put them in the belief hole treasure box and play them down the road. Yeah. We've got some good ones. We have a Patreon thing or two I wanted to mention. Jeff Nord. Oh, oh. Jeff Nord. He's been around for a while. You will be getting a Sonic present later in the show. What a guy. Stay tuned for that. Jeff's been in the hole for quite some time now, so I'm glad we're getting to his... We appreciate you, Jeff. Appreciate everyone. Yeah, we appreciate all you patrons out there that have been helping us to continue. Yeah, like just to keep keep the show going and growing. Who is it? Cat and Taylor? Cat and Taylor. We got uh, stories coming from Cat and Taylor. They actually were both in on the speak pipe that they left us. Thank you guys. And they just today posted some Instagram stories, which is cool because that helps Thank you. push the show. And they were pretty, uh, <laughs> pretty witty. Yeah. I'm looking forward to hearing their story. Yeah, absolutely. But anyways, thanks. Thank you guys thanks. so much for that. Uh, thanks, thanks. And all of you guys out there, if we don't mention you right here, we're in communication with you. We'll keep thanking you guys because we really do appreciate it. Um, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, everyone leaving comments and sharing. It really, really helps us. Yeah, it really does. Keeps us motivated. Yeah. I will say out of, all, I think, all the stories and all the messages we received about this upcoming episode, the scariest message I got was from our friend Brad because his child, Abram, had a terrifying prediction Oh, this came out of nowhere the other day. Yeah, which was why it was so scary. Yeah. Does that have anything to do with us? Yeah. Really? Well, no, I don't think you're involved in that. At least he didn't mention you. You're safe, John. You're safe from Abram, Abram's be. threats and but prophecies. But it might be because you haven't met his his young child. Maybe I shouldn't. Maybe you shouldn't. I don't know. <laughs> I know he's going to call I know Abram really out. likes us, but he seems to Yeah, it wasn't a threat. It. it was a, a warning. A dire warning? Good friend Bradley and his wonderful kid, Abram, who apparently has it out for us. So his uh, prophecy... For two of the three members of the whole. So this came from Brad on the 9th of October. Thanks, Brad, for sharing and freaking me out. Here's a creepy one for the belief hole. Abram and I were talking about age, and I was telling him who I'm older than, and I brought up you two. Quote, Daddy is older than Jeremy and Chris, and Abram said, we won't get to see them much anymore. <laughs> and I asked why. He said, because they are going to die. <laughs> I keep asking him why he said that, and he keeps saying that he he doesn't know. Um, that's really freaking creepy. Right, yeah. And then he said, and then so uh, we asked him more to just like ask Abram, like, can you clarify a little bit? And uh, he said, I asked him several times uh, why he said that, and all he says is, I don't know. Yeah, that's that's terrifying. And then he kept pressing him on it, and I guess he got he lost interest. <laughs> Started talking about something else. He's like, "I'm gonna go back to my video." Game. It was just yeah. a brief premonition of our. Well, doom. I'm not gonna be very good at the show by myself, so hopefully that doesn't hopefully, happen. Yeah, hopefully, it doesn't come true. It would just be like you sitting there and then just asking questions into the ether and waiting like 20 minutes. <laughs>
I would have a Ouija board out and have you guys come in. Channel us? Yeah. It would be filled with sound effects. To be completely whole honest. Episode, whole episode. <laughs> to be completely honest, it freaked me out pretty bad. The, when I first read it, it was just kind of shocking. And, yeah. like, and all the stuff we researched, I'm Especially like, ki- kids my kid seem to too. know yeah. stuff. Well, they don't. They also don't. But they also they, just say random things yeah. too. But and, you know. Still, you don't want to hear it when it's you. It's yeah, they're either very prophetic else. or they're very just. Nothing. They're just all, like all over the map. Yeah. But what if they're prophetic this time? I don't know. Hopefully by soon he meant like 80, 90 years. Maybe they just won't be seeing you soon because we'll be so busy on the belief hole. Well, he did say they're going to die. Maybe he means our current <laughs> work is words. Yeah, or died to our past lives of poverty and... Uh, yes, yeah. that's, we'll become rich and, and famous. He was hinting at a future a chrysalis that we'd be going into. That's our new life. Our older selves. Resurrection. And emerge as bu- beautiful, exactly. beautiful butterflies. I'm sure that's what he meant. He's a very forward-thinking child. I think he is. Well, do we do we have time? Do we want to start with uh, our first ghost story of the evening before we take a break? I think we should just take a break real take quick. A break. Let's take a quick break, uh, and then we're going to come at you guys with some new, original, never Coming heard, at you. never heard before ghost stories. General freaky paranormal uh, shalamalam. So stay tuned, guys. <laughs> we'll be right back. Welcome back, guys. We're back from the break, and we're going to get into some good ghost stories. And we we just took a brief walk, stretched our legs, and it reminded me, because it's a beautiful Halloween night, or Halloween season night, not quite Halloween yet, but it reminded me of uh, in John's new little suburb that he moved into. It's this kind of mysterious... It's a little burby. Yeah, like the burbs. I don't know if you guys see that, because I was going to ask what your guys' favorite scary movie is, or Halloween-ish movie. Mine's definitely the Burbs classic. That scene where it's great. Tom Hanks, if you guys haven't seen it, basically about just creepy neighbors up to no good, and uh, a ragtag team of uh, of friends trying a to figure out team. what's going on. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. But it's cool. It's like <laughs> it's like uh, middle aged men that kind of get together as this like boyhood group of friends. Probably our age. Yeah, I guess now. I guess weird. That's weird. Maybe a little bit older. Maybe early 40s. But they try to solve the mystery in in this little neighborhood. Um, Movies of the Burbs, it's great. But yeah, there's one scene that I was reminded of when we were walking through the neighborhood just now. Yeah, I feel like it's a good warning for John moving into this new place. Like it seems seems all well and good and peaceful, but you should take a word of advice from Corey Feldman's character, Ricky. Oh, Ricky, yeah. He's got a good word of advice for you, John. You should play that clip. What's, which one is it? Uh, It's called Neighbor Take Flight. Neighbor Take Flight. Ah, uh, it is a lovely night, isn't it? Yeah, green sky tonight. <laughs> green sky. Green sky at morning. Neighbor take warning. Sounds like a green mind. sky at night. Neighbor take flight. <laughs> you know, did you ever see the movie The Sentinel, Mr. Peterson? It's about the old guy who owns the apartment, which is kind of like the uh, gateway to hell. No, I I didn't see that. Well, I was doing some thinking. And, you know, being that their last house burned down and all, it's like maybe somebody left the gate open. (laughs) Oh, my God, that movie's so good. That's a great movie. If you, I mean... It may not be for everyone, but it does bring up a lot of childhood memories. But it's just, I can watch that movie now and love it. Yeah. I've seen it many times in my adult. And like every time I see it on TV, just randomly, I'm like, I, I'm, I'm it's in it. It's just like feel good horror, but not, it's, it's comedy. Just, everything about it is so good and well done. It's not like gory. It's no, just, it's mystery comedy. Mystery really. comedy, you know, but spooky, yeah. very like suck you in type movie. Yeah. yeah. It's, Check uh, it out, guys. The Burbs. We'll do a watch along someday. We mentioned the towner from now. One of the last times I saw it, it happened to be playing at the Canal Boat Lounge. Hal had it on on a screen in the background. Oh, did he really? Like, this is good. This is good. This just it seals the deal on the Canal Boat Lounge. It is a good Halloween movie. Yeah. Um, not everybody likes it because we did share it with a couple of girls in San Francisco. I think we were dating at the time and they were like, we watched like 20 minutes. And it was one of those atmospheres where like you're tense the whole time because you're sitting there and yeah. they're just like, this is boring. This be It would be a good one-on-one date movie, like when you knew the person well enough. Maybe. Jeremy, is that true? 
Well, we w- I thought I tried to watch this with Jess. I don't yeah. remember San Francisco. I remember trying mm. to watch this with Jess, and I think I think we were all just tired. And it's it's one of those. And she loves '90s movies, but it was just kind of slow paced at the beginning. Yeah, you know, it is a little slow paced, but I lo- I That's like how that. Good build movies up, yeah. are though. You got the long shots. You got the the build up of the story and the mood. I'll make her watch it again. Anyways, let's get to a real ghost story. This first story comes from an old friend of ours, Aaron. Those of you who are local will probably recognize his voice if you were around the same age as we were uh, growing up. This story is a very interesting story. It's unique, I think. The first one of the few submitted by Aaron and his brother, Justin. Yeah, really just, I mean, for me, some of those stories, a couple of them specifically are unique and bizarre to the point where like I would listen to it. You know, you hear a lot of the same kind of ghost stories and these aren't even necessarily ghost stories, Yeah, but they have that unique edge to them that sticks in your head and you're like, that. it sounds so bizarre and just different that it has this authenticity to it that I feel like they really did each experience something. Yeah, they seem to have a property over there in, in Norton area that seems to just have a sort of generational activity where every few years something strange occurs. The phenomenon's always different. It almost kind of reminds me of a Skinwalker Ranch situation, but much yeah, less active. Their property has a story. And one thing I want to do, guys, coming up is I want to make it the location of our first belief hole on-site investigation. Because a lot of this activity happens in a specific area on their property. I forget what size they said it is, but it's like a square in the woods that they can point to. And it's like, you know, stuff happens kind of here and there around on this property. But this is the, I think uh, Justin referred to it as the um, high activity. The Bermuda area. rectangle. Yes, the Bermuda rectangle <laughs> in Norton. All right, let's hear it. It was probably around this time of year. It was uh, chilly because we all had we our nice clothes on. So we're going out for the evening. And I just remember it was a chill in the air. So it was probably October, November. It was me, my brother, my cousin Curtis, and one of our friends, Becca. And uh, so we went we went out to a couple bars, met up with a couple people, um, just had, you know, your average night of going out, had some drinks. So we get back to my parents' house. It's a five acre wooded property and there's no neighbors really on either side. So it's very private. The vegetation and the trees is very, very dense and lush. So it's, it's a very private setting and it's probably by then it's probably 2.30 or later in the morning and we've all got a decent buzz on from drinking. So I'm I'm talking on my phone. They're over there just shooting the shit, just, just having fun, talking about stuff. And all of a sudden something stopped me. I mean, it was paralyzing how loud it was. It was like a screeching sound like like, you know, if an animal is getting attacked at nighttime by like a coyote and it's it's death shrill. It was like that, but it was magnified so loud. I mean, it was like a this tornado siren going off, but it was a natural sound. It just stopped everybody in their tracks, kind of one of those hair standing up moments. Can you do that sound? <sighs> <laughs> yeah, they're practicing. Um, but no, so I do that noise sometimes. So my cousin, obviously, you know, the first, as soon as we made eye contact, he said, Sir Duncan, did you make that noise? And I wish I could have taken credit for it because it was amazing, but no. And once we both knew I didn't make the noise, the situation got even heavier because now we knew something was close to us that made that noise. And we were trying to say, where do you think it came from? And where do you think it came from? And everybody, all four of our hands kind of pointed in the same direction, right up behind the basketball hoop. It was obviously pretty close to us. At that point, a couple of us were standing near our basketball hoop. When you pull up, there's a retaining wall and there's a small hill with maybe 10 feet of grass behind it. And then it turns into straight dense woods. We all felt like the sound had come from close by and not far up in the woods at all. I mean, it was it was definitely a close by sound. At that point, my cousin and my brother, you know, we've heard and seen a lot of things over the years here that we just scared us or we couldn't explain or, you know, all the above. And they started talking about how this is our property. We shouldn't have to be scared here. And so they decided to venture up into the woods to try to locate what it was. And I mean, I, I don't know, I didn't have the balls to do it, I guess, or maybe I was smart enough not to, but I just didn't want to see it. At that point, me and my cousin Curtis both walked up together. We walked about 25, 30, approximately, feet into the woods. Came up to a brush pile. He went to the left and I went to the right. We kind of bent back around it, and before I even got all the way back to where we were walking together, I saw the glowing, what looked like a glowing figure of a human being, or something that resembled a human being, but it was illuminating itself like a glow stick would, like it had its own light. It didn't have any light from any houses or other lights, or there was no moonlight coming in, there was no nothing. 
It was just the shape. It had legs, and it had like a torso, and its neck was like propped up at like the base of a tree, like a human would be laying there, like if it were like dead or hurt or unable to move. Propped there. But yeah, yeah, like it was like it was probably about a 25 to 30 degree angle. Very, very terrifying. Never seen anything like it before or after. We both looked at it. I, I we made eye contact, and I could tell he was as scared or more scared than I was. And he took a step back, and I took a step back, and then his next step broke a twig and made a snapping noise. And that's when we both just went sprinting as fast as we could and jumped off the retaining wall. And I barrel rolled onto my feet and flew into the house and locked the door. I was sitting here on the, the porch where, where we're actually sitting now, and I, I was watching, obviously, because I was in 10. I saw them come running out of the woods and, like they said, kind of stumbled across the retaining wall and back into the house. And Becca, our friend, she thought they were just trying to scare her, apparently, because she, she goes, I'm going to walk up and see what it looks like. Yeah, and I was kind of surprised because she was in her high heels and dress, but I was like, all right, whatever. She thought everybody was trying to mess with her, and it, I think that's pretty crazy to believe because she heard the noise. I did, That noise didn't get your attention, and I, maybe you're not my kind of person, but... Uh, <laughs> She came running back out after a couple seconds too, maybe five seconds, and came running back to where I was. And I said, what did you see? She goes, I don't know. It was like a person with light coming from it. When she got back in the house, she only had one high heel left on. Okay, so. Um, <laughs> yeah, she, yeah. Was, she was very scared. I was inside of the bat when she got back there. <laughs> the same situation lasted long enough for two people, three people, but two trips up there to independently see the same thing. I've seen and heard maybe only a handful of things in my life because I, by nature, I've always tried to be a skeptic of things I see. You know, I, I have a logical mind. My hair was standing up on my neck and I didn't even see it just from them seeing it. So I can't imagine how intense that would have been. In their eyes, you could see it was very, um, very tense. The glowing man. That's real close to our property. Yeah, very close. <laughs> you said that with scared eyes. <laughs> well, it's basically <laughs> behind us, you know, right? From right here, it's, uh, uh, I mean, a stone's throw would be a little bit of an exaggeration. No, mom and dad's. Oh, mom and dad's place, yeah. But this whole area, I mean. Oh, yeah. Where your studio is right now, the, you know, the Clinton Village area used to be part of Wolf Creek, which goes all the way up towards, you know, Fairlawn, Akron area, and what you'll hear from some of these stories is like this, that area. Then you have like, used to be Loyal Oak Tavern. Mm -hmm. It's now Wolf Creek Tavern. That's notoriously haunted. That's only a, a couple miles up the road. I think we're in the right place, boys. Rogue's Hollow yeah. right down the street. Aaron touches on that. One of, he has a story experience in Rogue's Hollow. Oh, Rogue's Hollow. We could do a whole episode on we, that. Yeah, we should. We've had requests. Uh, that's one that's thing we will do. That's a spooky place. Yeah. Right, yeah. right up the road. Yeah. This is an enchanted area for sure. Certainly, it's a good way to put it, enchanted. Well, that was an enchanted story. Like, you don't know what it was. It was exactly. like... Yeah, to come across something in the woods, a that's human really figure... That's really bizarre, too. I mean, most phenomena that happens, you can sort of put it into a category of right? yeah. some sort, but that doesn't seem to fit. That's why I like the story. Nothing comes to mind. No, it's a unique story, and it, these weird, fringier, unique stories have a, a dash of realness to it that I think the stories that are so played out don't, just because anyone can make up a ghost story, you can hear these stories and repeat elements. But walking in the woods, coming across a humanoid figure that seems bioluminescent or has, like a, like you said, a glow stick, glow stick man, you know, a right. figure laying in the woods and the way his head was described as being kind of uh, propped up like it had been placed, like a body pushed against a tree. You know, or not, something that slumped down by a tree. Slumped down by a tree with its just Did its it head Did it move up. at all? No, no, I don't think it moved at all. I think they were just so freaked out that there was this, you know, glowing just man. Just to think like... Well, what Justin said, and that was Aaron's brother who was recounting that experience, he said the first thing that popped into his head was something extraterrestrial. Yeah. Just because he's familiar with that concept, you know, he's like, I don't know what this could be that would be earthbound. An right. alien, maybe? I mean, it sounds it's like bioluminescence right. in a weird way. Yeah, but if, I mean, depending on where you're from culturally and, you know, regionally, some people might go, is this, you know, something more mystical, like elf or something, some woodland right. thing? We talked about that in the last episode, like fairies and right. goblins and things that have these attributes, but I've never heard of anything like that. And it is such a weird story that three people visually identified yeah. in that story, separate people. And I like that, I like that detail about Becca, their friend who, wearing high heels, screamed and it ran back to the house, breaking a heel. Right. That doesn't, just to be fair though, someone after a party, like screaming in the woods, you could see how that could happen pretty Or like easily. being over, overly reactionary yeah. with, with alcohol. Or like if she thought she right. saw something. Yeah, yeah, but with the other people that saw it, obviously yeah. it wasn't just something. I think the skeptical argument would be Foxfire. Have you guys heard of Foxfire? It's like a bioluminescent fungi. 
that grows in dark, lush woods, kind of like their property. Foxfire. Foxfire, which is, is that, was a really that cool name. from the Bell Witch story? Oh, oh. that's that was the... Uh, are you talking oh, about you're the, right. witch, the witch ball? Foxfire. Oh, that's crazy. I, I remember that because he was the voice of the Bell Witch. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> I guess that kind of goes in line with our Weird. Uh, episode a couple episodes ago. But yeah, Foxfire. Uh, it's funny. I didn't know what that... I thought it was like an herb when we did that story. Oh, so now we know that the, that witch ball would have been glowing, which yeah. would have been an interesting kind of visual description yeah. of that. Um, so, but the reason why I don't think it would be a, a good explanation to rule out anything paranormal in this situation is that first of all, it doesn't grow <laughs> connected that way. Right, in a, a humanoid in a humanoid shape. It's like you go in and it looks beautiful, but it doesn't look like a person. And also, they never saw it again. You know, it's right. something that grows. And the, if they wanted to go, if they went out the following night and it was foxfire, you'd have the same pattern in the woods, just not moving, because it's it's and it's a collection of mushroom, basically. Right. What could that possibly be? Just rationally, it reminds you know. me of that episode of The Simpsons. Do you remember that? classic episode where uh, there's this, <laughs> yeah. this alien that's been spotted extraterrestrial in uh, Springfield and it was it a Halloween episode it was wasn't a, it? I think it might have been a, a Treehouse of Horror episode but it was at the end they see the alien it's coming out of the woods and it's it, he's saying something he's this glowing entity and he's like something like I bring love and <laughs> peace is, but you find out it's like Mr. Burns who's been uh, contaminated uh, with contam- radioactive material <laughs> and he's, he's just like all, he's just like willowy man the weird part about that I keep forgetting is that there was that horrible right. sound yeah. at the beginning yeah but fungus doesn't scream at least as far as I know yeah the, like what what was that horrific squeal it sound scream like a boar or something like a wild boar but we don't have those well ah! <laughs> <laughs> what's interesting is that that scream you know if some something animalistic or some sort of monstrous creature out in the woods like this again is just one thing that happened in this section of their property that's had all these strange yes. phenomena. And in an upcoming story, we're going to hear some other crazy stuff that maybe will bring some ideas to the listeners out there of what this could be. But it happens in that same in that same section, that yeah. same little square section of their property, hmm. the Bermuda Rectangle of Norton, Ohio. Yeah, but thank you, Aaron, for sharing that. And Justin, should we do the their other story? I thought it might be kind of fun to do is break up their stories throughout the show. So we'll like return to their their next story and go to other listeners' stories in between. Yeah, we can do that. Mix it up. Yeah, mix it up a little bit. Thank you to the Duncans for that first uh, deposit of paranormal story. <laughs> deposit. So uh, next up would be Anna. Oh. We might have a train coming. Just Listeners, we are by train track, so we may just leave it in the show. But there may be the occasional train Good passing ambience. by. The same tracks that carried that uh, wandering serial killer that chopped off all those heads. Oh, it's a good that? Halloween story. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's a sad story. This is in the 90s. He was a train hopper, and he was jumping, just happened to come through this area, of course, the old Wolf Creek area, and was decapitating people and hopping back on the train going down. He was decapitating people? Mm-hmm. And then hopping on the train? Hopping back on the train. It was like, who would he hop would, on another train? He would kill someone and then hop on the train, go to the next town and do mm-hmm. it? Chop them off. Yeah, I think it started up in Cleveland, maybe, and then ended down in Cincinnati. When he they, was a serial killer. Well, just in the nature of him killing As multiple the train goes head cutters. cutters. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that was always a Ooh, story that freaked me what out. A, maybe he'll come back in spirit form now and take us out. Maybe this is the yeah. prediction that Abram made. No, Abram. We got Jake here. We got John Stock. We're all right. Yeah, we got a new mascot. All right, so yeah, let's go to let's go to Anna's story. Speaking of black dogs, oh yeah, she had that st- that great story in a, a previous episode, a couple episodes ago. Yeah, um, black dog. Okay, Anna, this is Anna's story. Hey, you guys, it's Anna. You requested some spooky stories for your Halloween episode, yes, and I hope I'm not too late. But no. I just wanted to share with you guys a kind of short, scary story. It's actually my dad's story. So when my dad was in his early 20s, he was living in Santa Barbara. And for those of you who don't know, Santa Barbara is a town on the coast of California. And it's surrounded by mountains and canyons and windy roads. And at the time, my dad was living with his best friend in his best friend's family cabin that was out in these mountains in a very deep canyon. It had a long dirt driveway that led up from the main road. And my dad says that during his time living there, he had a lot of scary stuff happen to him and that pretty much anyone who stayed at the cabin would have similar experiences. Um, But what people would say most is that when they would go use the outhouse on the property, uh, because it was a super old cabin built in the early 1900s, um, but when people would go use the outhouse, they would say that they could hear a woman laughing out in the canyon, out in the forest. 
So this scared a lot of people, um, but my dad says that there was one night in particular that he would never forget. So on this night, it had been raining really hard and their dirt driveway had now turned to mud, so they couldn't leave. So they were just hunkering down in the cabin for the night. It was just my dad and his roommate and it was super late and they were just playing cards when they heard a knock at the door. And this was super weird to them because they rarely got visitors as it was being where they were and let alone in the middle of the night during a storm. They were pretty freaked out. So um, my dad's roommate grabbed his gun and went up to the door. And my dad said he heard him open the door and that there was just silence. But then his roommate came and grabbed him and said, dude, you have to come check this out. So they went out to the front porch and there was no one there, but there were footprints. And these footprints looked like they were like a small woman's boot footprint. And they let up from the front porch steps and they went to the door and they just stopped. There was no more footprints. It was just like someone walked right up to the door. The weirdest part about these footprints was they weren't mud. They were pure motor oil. And that was crazy considering that someone would have to walk through the mud to get to their front door. So yeah, that really spooked them. Um, but the scariest part about this was apparently during the early 1950s, a woman truck driver had crashed her truck and died right where their driveway started to the cabin. So it's just freaky that, you know, she's still there haunting that dark canyon where she died. Um, it still freaks me out to this day, and I've heard the story a million times. Um, but anyways, happy Halloween, you guys. I hope you enjoyed this story. I love your guys' podcast. Keep doing what you're doing. Bye. Would not stay in Thank that you, cabin. Man. Thank you for that story. That was pretty creepy. Yeah. Yeah, I like that uh, the twist at the end with the, the motor oil footsteps. Yeah, that's yeah. awesome. That almost sounds like an urban legend. Well, it's two part interesting because it's, you know, obviously the first thing that she mentions is you'd have to walk through that. They had that storm and there's everything's caked in mud. So, like, if you did have motor oil on your boot and you're a terrestrial human alive person, you're going to walk through the mud. You're going to get mud on the deck. Right. It's just alive motor oil. Would. How would you get just motor oil boot prints? And then the boot prints went to the door and then they didn't go back down the steps. They just went to the door. That's a ghost. And that's a ghost of some kind. Yeah. Even a prank. I mean, that's just too far out to be a prank. Well, yeah, to be in the middle of nowhere like that and have someone coming up to your door. Yeah, and there's no payoff for them other than to freak people out. And they were saying, also the fact that they said the multiple people stay there as guests in that cabin and how it's always when you go to the outhouse, they would hear a woman laughing. Yeah. Like the worst place to hear a woman laughing is in the woods, <laughs> in, in the toilet. Especially it's if like going Blair number two. Witch. <laughs> yeah. How yeah. awkward would that be? Yeah, you're taking a, a relief time. You're taking a relief. You're very time, vulnerable, and you hear point. a woman outside, and she's laughing. Is she laughing at you? <laughs> Just adds to the horror. She looking in, going like, "Oh, <laughs> little guy, <laughs> who goes to the bathroom in the woods." Good story. Yes, thank you. That Anna. was good. Um, yeah, maybe we'll, maybe we'll uh, request to stay sometime and do a little uh, oh, investigation. Yeah. I'd be down for that. I don't know if I would be, but uh, I'd like to say that I would be. Not be too scared. Yeah, thanks, Anna, for that submission. That was a good story. I'd never, I've never heard. Um, well, I guess yeah, I wouldn't have heard that story. I never heard that story before. <laughs> it's a family. Well, it just sounds like story. it sounds like an urban legend. You know, it just sounds because it has all the trademarks. It's like, definitely like could be a creepy pasta or something. Yeah, but it's not because it came from Anna. It's real. Um, yeah. What was her clarification on the previous uh, doggy story? Oh, the big black dog she yeah, saw. Yeah. So we did an episode on Black Shuck and devil dogs and sort of dark omens of death. Uh, apparently, Abram is a human version of that. Thank you, Brad. Oh, Omen of Death? Um, <laughs> That's a terrible thing to yeah, say uh, about your friend's child. Right. Um, well, he started it. It did. Yeah, she just said that, you know, we'd asked about a little more detail on that experience. And that re was a really good story. So, guys, check it out on that episode. Bell Witch. Bell Witch episode. Bell Witch episode. So she just said, for more clarification, it was, it was huge. The biggest dog I've ever seen. Like a very large Great Dane, I would say. It was shaggy and black and had green eyes that glowed in the light of my headlights. It had pointed ears and a really eerie, chilling stare. It also was not a dog man, John. So it didn't walk <laughs> on hind legs. It went from sitting dead center in the road in the pouring rain to slowly turning and walking through the chain link fence that was on the right side of the road. And like I mentioned the next day, I checked for holes in the fence and there wasn't any. It couldn't have just walked through like that unless it wasn't a physical form. I hope that adds a little more detail. 
Uh, definitely. Yeah, the fact that there was no hole and the dog walked through. Yeah. That's a bit paranormal, I'd say. And eye shine? I don't know about dog eye shine. What is it typically? Is it typically a green color or is that more of usually like if it's just a normal dog? I mean, that alone wouldn't trigger yeah. any paranormal well, bells. That could like be. Like a yellowish, right. wouldn't it be? More yellow? But yeah, I think that could go either that way. That could be shine from the headlights. Yeah. But I mean, you'd have to be there to see it. Right. And if you listen to that story, what's interesting about it is that it, she's driving in the middle of the nowhere in the mountains and there's a dog just lying in the middle of the road and how it just basically turns around and stares and then slowly walks off, not perturbed by the weather. Right. You know, you'd think if you were you'd be in the middle of cover. A, yeah, under a tree or something, right. it's just lying in the road. Oh, that's really creepy. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. Check that story out, guys. It was a good one on, on the uh, Bell Witch episode. Creepy. But yeah, thank you, Anna. And if any of you guys want to submit a story, you can do that. Go to our website, beliefhole.com, and click on the leave a voice message button and record your own. We'll make you famous. Yeah. Or record your own and send it in. I mean, if you want, because I think the speak pipe only allows like 90, 90 seconds. Yeah. So if you want to leave a longer message or get a, a longer story. Record it on your computer and send it in. Exactly. Absolutely. So what's next on the what's the next there? story in our treehouse of horror? We need something like that, guys. Our Halloween episodes should have a name. I like the... I thought Deadline would be cool. Deadline? Like a phone line, but death, deadline. Oh. No? That's kind of saying. Got a cool ring. Kind of sounds like a To Catch a Predator type Yeah, that's <laughs> what I was thinking. Show. <laughs> Dateline. Well, Dateline, it's not. yeah. Okay. All right. So next we have Cat and Taylor. Cat and Taylor. Yeah, submitted this uh, story together. Should we play it? Yeah, let's just jump into this one. This is goody. All righty. Well, hello, hello. Oh, they did it. <laughs> Hi, guys. Um, I'm Kat. I'm Taylor. And we are both from California. We are roommates here in California. Um, huge fans of the show. Big, we, big fans. Yeah, love the show. <laughs> love um, the whole paranormal and conspiracy theories. And thank you guys so much for putting out a show that is informative and also very, very entertaining. Oh, you guys are welcome. hilarious. Thank, Thank you. you for listening. Um, I listened to the episode the other day about the out of body experiences, and I forget who it was who touched on the sleep paralysis and kind of what happens um, when you hit that cusp and you hear voices or you see faces. Oh, yeah. Um, and it reminded me of an experience that me and Taylor had one night when we were having a sleepover <laughs> and I wanted to share it with you guys. So one night we were falling asleep um, and I heard whispering um, and I thought it was, I assumed it was Taylor um, and I mumbled something back to her, didn't get a response. So I just rolled it off as, you know, she just mumbled something before she fell asleep and I didn't get a response. So we were just, it was time to go to sleep. Um, once I thought that I was finally asleep, I opened my eyes and I was laying on my back completely just paralyzed. I couldn't move anything but my head just to turn it. Um, while I was laying there and my eyes adjusted, I saw something moving back and forth and I was hearing swooshing with every move that this was making. While the swooshing was going on, the whispering started again. And with each swoosh, it was getting faster and closer to my face. And the whispers were getting deeper and more snarly and growl-like. I was completely terrified. I couldn't move anything, couldn't say anything, couldn't let out a cry for help or anything like that. I was able to turn my head and look at Taylor and see that she was completely unbothered, completely asleep, sound asleep. And she eventually woke up to my muffled crying and was able to shake me. And once she shook me, everything stopped. No more whispers, no more swooshing, no more um, entity going back and forth. Everything was, was gone. It was a really weird experience. Um, I don't really know how to explain it or what it was. Um, you guys are actually now the second, third, and fourth person, people, that I have ever told about this experience. And yeah, make of it what you will. I don't really know what to make of it, but your um, episode on the out-of-body experiences kind of uh, brought that back for me, and I just wanted to share it with you. Um, like I said, we are huge fans of the show. We will continue to spread it like wildfire. Um, thank you guys for doing what you do. 
And uh, as long as you guys are making episodes, we'll... Quiet. <laughs> 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 oh, I thought that was in the room. Yeah, um, we will creepy. continue to listen. So thank you guys. Yeah, yes. Kitties. <laughs> the kid we have a dog in the room. Yeah, so. Jake got a little excited when he heard that kitten. Awesome. Yeah, definitely. I mean, not quite a ghost story, more of a uh, sort of sleep paralysis experience with an en- entity in, in that twilight state. Definitely an entity story for yeah. sure. Yeah, it's that twilight state. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we talked about that before, right? On the yeah, like she said, the cusp of uh, falling asleep and We've being all conscious. been there too. We yeah. all know that feeling of like right before you cross the boundary of sleep, yeah. when you get jolted awake or something else like this happens. Where it's like you're passing through worlds almost. Yeah, it's like a it's a, way to put it. a transient realm mm-hmm. that you're going through. Your consciousness is going through. And in that, yeah, we've talked about that before. That you see the faces, lots of faces. You see the yeah, I, the detail on some faces that you see they come through. I, I rarely hear voices, but sometimes I do. I do, and it's a uh, very clear. Yeah, and, and they're very, always they always seem like you're catching someone in mid conversation. Weird random statements. Just like yeah. I told him to put the ball down. Like why would really, why would my brain that? say that? It's why? so bizarre. I experience it all the time where it's just like it's like you're almost tapping into a radio station. Yeah, yeah. exactly. You know, where you where something else is going on and you just happen to be passing through or your brain's retuning itself. It's like this whole other reality that you're not really directly a part of, but you're you're yeah. somehow experiencing it. Well, it's interesting because, like, you know, we did that out of body episode, that kind of two parter, and we mentioned shadow people on that a little bit. And we talked about how the scientific explanation of, you know, sleep paralysis, you know, right? Everybody kind of goes, like, oh, that's just sleep paralysis, and everything you're experiencing is some sort of biological, chemical combination that's creating these hallucinations and whatnot. Right. But um, from all the research that we were able to look into, it didn't seem like it really explained the sort of pattern of experiences that people have seeing the exact same types of archetypes. There's nothing scientifically that explains like why people see an old hag or why people see a shadow person or the man with the hat or why they're always standing in doorways. There's nothing scientific that explains that. The scientific explanations can explain why your body's immobile because of a chemical that might be released to keep you safe. Right, while paralytic. Yeah. Right, but there's no, the, the skeptic argument of like it's just sleep paralysis and some random affect of chemical actions going on during sleep paralysis, that, that's a guess. Right. Oh, of course it is. Yeah. yeah. So it's, it is interesting. And if no one's ever seen the movie, The Nightmare, the film, mm-hmm. I, I don't know if it's a Netflix it's a documentary. Film. It's it, on Netflix. Excellent. Yeah. It's terrifying. And it really goes to give some credence to people who've had these experiences throughout their lives where there's something more going on. Night terrors, sleep paralysis. But how there's more going Entities. on. Entities. Yeah, exactly. Um, so yeah, thank you for sharing that story. Uh, I know a lot of our listeners out there have those experiences, so um, you're not alone. Yes. Kat, Taylor, thank you guys so much. And thank you for being patrons. And thank you for being for being from California. We're crossing the country. We are. Should we take a quick break? We probably should. Okay. Well, let's stop put this, put this sleeping dog right dog now, out snoring <laughs> shaky boy. Yeah, we're going to take a quick break, guys. When we come back, we are going to have uh, some more original paranormal spooky yeah, stories. And we're going to check back in with the uh, the Wolf Creek property over there. Oh, yeah. That'll be fun. Let's see you with the next story. Pretty excellent. Awesome. We'll be back soon. Mr. Grady, you were the caretaker here. You, uh, chopped your wife and daughter up into little bits. Then you blew your brains out. I don't have any recollection of that at all. That at all, that at all, that at all. What are ghosts? And why do they keep repeating the same actions over and over again? It might very well be a poltergeist intrusion instead of a classic haunting. There's a difference. Poltergeist disturbances are fairly short duration. Hauntings can go on for years. One theory is that a haunting is a violent release of energy, somehow frozen in space and time. When weather conditions are exactly right, the action is played back like a recording. You were saying about poltergeist? Poltergeist are usually associated with an individual. Hauntings seem to be connected with an area, a house usually. People have been seeing and hearing ghosts for thousands of years. Soon, we may know how and why. What a tremendous gain that would be for science. And what a tremendous loss for storytelling. Mr. Grady, you were the caretaker here. I'm sorry to differ with you, sir. 
But you are the caretaker. You've always been the caretaker. I should know, sir. I've always been here. Welcome back. Yeah. That was a Welcome blast back. from the past. Yeah, uh, well, that was a, a montage we made up for last year's Halloween. It's good hearing The Shining. The new movie's coming out, by the way. Oh, yeah. Really? Uh, Dr. Sleep. Yeah, the sequel to The Shining. Really? That's yeah, interesting. Just Jack Torrance's son, Danny Torrance, the one who had the little finger. That went, I'm excited about that. Yeah. Ed Rob. Rob. yeah. I, did you guys see it too? No, I haven't seen it yet. I've it. heard mixed things. I really wanted to see it because I read the book. I like the first new one. Yeah, the first the really re- yeah the remake of the first half of the book. But then I heard so many like eh, reviews that it just really turned me off of going to see. It. Oh, I, I will watch it because what I did read is if you're a fan of the book, you're gonna you're gonna like it. There's stuff to enjoy. We're just so spoiled now too. Yeah, I miss the days when you go into like a video rental and you didn't have like the luxury of IMDb and right. reviews. And, and we're just bombarded with high quality entertainment 24 hours a day. Well, and yeah, and also think about it. You, they make a good point with the video rental places. And for all of our younger listeners out there, there once was a time- Where you had to wait? You had to wait and you would go, you wouldn't see a movie trailer- Right. Unless you were at the movies. Right. So <laughs> we're on a VHS tape. Right. So, but you, when you went into a store and you've got all these options of different, you would you would rent it based on the box. Based on the or cover. Or how convincing the the writer was who was hired. Ma- a lot of bad movies that way. Yeah, way to tr- yeah, good way to trick people is have I an know. awesome cover for the movie and then just the, be it. Yeah, the the cover art was so important in those movies yeah. and there were so many bad movies I watched be so because misleading. of that. I know. But yeah, that's funny. But I do miss that. I do miss like the surprise of not knowing exactly what I'm getting into. And mm-hmm. actually it was an event to go to the video store, walk around and the, the smell of the video store kind of oh, has God. a smell like a yeah. bookstore. Remember the sound of the creature Creaking floorboards. Oh yeah, everything wood. Yeah, cinema transit. Cinema transit, baby. And uh, Canal Fulton video. Star video. Star video is another one. Music used to be the same way. You used to have to wait. Right, and then you get an album. Yeah, and you just you used to just consume it forever. Like yeah. it was just you explored it. You exploited it, and you read the lyrics. You open up a little yeah, book. Yeah, everything was just it's no just internet. different times. I feel like we're talking about you know seventy years ago. <laughs> it feels like 70 years ago. Know, the way really? things have changed, but it was Terrence really. Terrence McKenna. There, I guess, but it is Time like, wave zero. Yeah. Yep. He was right about that. What did he say? Terrence McKenna predicted novelty, novelty would never. increase exponentially. Like, you know, 2012 and beyond was like the straight up. And he's right. Yeah. Well, he's dead now, but he's. Well, he was right he's about still the right. exponential novelty. <laughs> yeah. I mean, because internet was in its baby phases back then. Well, explain what you mean. You guys said uh, exponential novelty. We're getting off on a little bit of a tangent here, but Terrence McKenna was a great philosopher. Psychonaut. A psychonaut, that's a good way to put His it. His idea he was, was to into go into psychedelics, but also a brilliant mind. Yeah. Right. We touched on this in our uh, DMT episode and out-of-body experiences, mm-hmm. but his idea was to go into the psychedelic realms and pull back information as much as you can. An explorer. Right, and to bring back information to help humanity. That's kind of his idea. Yeah. He, he charted, like, over time, somehow he... It was an algorithm that he used very specific events throughout history sort of created this future time map of how things would change. And as you know, we got into the 2012 and beyond, it was just this straight up linear curve of novelty or what he would describe as newness, like new things happening. That's around the time that everyone lost the ability to get bored. Exactly. You know, social media and just yeah. the, co- I mean, smartphones. internet, smartphones, all that stuff. We have just constant, you know, politics right now. Yeah. Just crazy. Well, yeah. When we had, you think about it, like, it's true. Yes, we had internet, you know, late 90s, mid 90s, really, but it really Dial wasn't up. like, it wasn't the pervasive um, influence in our lives until like around 2012, where it was like every day, like even social networking, like, you know, Facebook, stuff like that. They really didn't hit its peak until around, you know, 2010, yeah. around that area. Once we got to a point where everything seemed to kind of fall into place with, okay, there's a baseline of this crazy technological growth. And from here on out, it seems to just be, yeah, skyrocket straight right. ahead. No one can even keep up anymore. It's right. just things are changing. And yeah, especially with the politics and stuff going on now, it just seems like it's just... It's nonstop. It's just chaos. Yeah. And of course with the news and the 24 hour news cycle where everything is like a major news alert. The conversation started as, you know, entertainment and how we're just exposed, just like highest quality entertainment instantly now where we used to have to wait and. Right. Well, there's also an argument for, um, I forget the term for this because I didn't 
plan for this conversation, but there's a term for uh, when you have too much information, it almost makes you learn less because you don't know well, where to exactly go. That's exactly what's for, happening right. right now. There's so much information that we're getting that's not true right now. Right. On every side. I mean, it's just hearsay, hearsay, hole. hearsay. Spun <laughs> yeah. around the internet 10 times before you actually get it. And we're building philosophies on just oh, yeah. gobbledygook. Well, you know, we talked about that in the last episode. Like, I know it was kind of a silly example, but I was... This is a ghost episode, by the yeah, way. Yeah, right. But, <laughs> but <laughs> this is interesting. To that point, like, last episode I was researching fairies, like fairy lore and real history of fairies. And it's kind of a silly example, but the idea that if you want to research this stuff, especially with Google, you get a result and you read that, you know, blog post or BuzzFeed article or list verse, whatever it is. And then they cite it from there and it's from like another top 10 article and everything's like feeding off of each other, but there's less and less uh, deep research. And you just have this like surface level of just information that's repeating and it's hard to get deep down. And I have a recommendation for anyone listening. If you want a good web browser that does not censor results and actually feeds you the information specifically that you're looking for based on what your keywords are, download Dissenter. Uh, it's a really good app. It doesn't have any of the censoring. So like you could search any, you know, hot button keyword conspiracy theory. And instead of it being, you know, 20 articles debunking from CNN and Snopes, there's a couple of those because, you know, there would be, but there's also the actual results of what you're looking for. Right, so I recommend it. Decenter. Awesome. Yeah. Sorry, guys. Back into some no, good No, not quite stories. yet. Patreon stinger first. Oh, yeah. Okay. So we have got a Patreon stinger for a new patron. Actually, an, an older patron because we're catching up. This is for Jeff. We'll always be catching up. Yes, yeah. but we will always get to you. We will always get to you. We'll always find we you. We appreciate your support so much, everybody. And here we go. This is for Jeff. The Belief Hole is a strange and curious place filled with all sorts of wonderful creatures. <laughs> Our focus right now is a bizarre and amazing being known as the Jeffrey of Nordlinger Swallow. As we reach the inner bands of the belief hole, the Jeffrey can often be spotted lounging near a wormhole, listening to the belief hole and all the wonderful sounds it makes. He laughs and giggles with delight as the stories unfold from a technological device that emits waves of sound washing over him like a warm summer's rain. I bet if the belief hole could talk, it would be most grateful by the interest the Nordling has taken in it. In fact, if you listen closely, you can hear the gratitude pulsing from its inner sanctum. That's some creepy gratitude. It's beautiful. Uh, that was great. I love the uh, <laughs> the pulsing of gratitude. It sounded like um, from its inner sanctum, like ogre orgasms from like deep inside the yeah, earth. Yeah, it was a little sexual. Yeah. I don't know if you meant to. Be. It was just kind of groany. Yeah, but in a good way. Well, you know, it comes out randomly in my, right. from my brain. It's not like I plan how this is going to go. <laughs> I just, I think he said something about like, and it probably wasn't even what he was talking about. It was something to do with uh, like the old, did he even say documentary style? Oh, like 80s uh, educational. Edu- or, 80s yeah. educational. So maybe it was close to yeah. what he was thinking. Because he gave us an idea, which anyone who's a, a patron write, and writes in and gives us an idea of like what they're looking for, what they're into, uh, his suggestion was like 70s, 80s, vintage kind of educational. Yeah, definitely fits in that realm. Yeah, That's the, that's what I got. Yeah. So <laughs> if that's wrong, sorry, Jeff, but we do appreciate <laughs> your patronage and thanks to everybody that's um, been helping us out. Yes, we are more than grateful. And if for those of you still waiting on your stinger, we do do them in order, so don't worry. The years are coming. And, and they uh, will continue to come. And I will, and I've said this before, but I will put on our website a playlist yeah, of we all need the to stingers. Get, we need to get all those up there. Yeah, it's coming up after the merch store. Everything will happen the in, merch in store. due time. And the merch store that we've been saying and saying and saying is oh, going yes. to be out. We will have the merch the mortuary the merch store <laughs> <laughs> the merch store up and rolling guys so get your merch spread the word spread the whole and make us happy we're going to have some what hoodies some t-shirts we're going to have yes all kinds it's of the things the basic we're just starting out on Your-cousies. this Jacuzzis. but uh i'm going to buy one i'm excited i am too i want a hoodie yeah and we need bumper stickers so people can you know spread it when they're in traffic some bumper stickers so thank you guys for that. Thanks, everybody. All right, let's get back to the show. Yes. All right. We got another story from Creepy Haunted Norton and the Bermuda Rectangle. Yeah, we're going to go back to the Duncan Compound and get another story from uh, Justin. 
I love this story because it is not quite a ghost experience, but I mean, you don't really know what it is, what it is, but it, it's unique. And it actually, it kind of ties into our, um, some of our missing four and one stories we've covered in the past. Yeah. We'll tie that in after the story. Cause there are some creepy correlations that we're going to get into. Yes. Ooh, that's a good podcast title. Creepy, creepy correlations. <laughs> oh, <I like laughs> creepy it. correlations and co You Ready? Roll it up. All right. This is about, I don't know, seven... Six, seven years ago, me and my buddy Greg Hooper, we went out with and drank all the time. He was also an avid hunter. He spent more time in the woods, like around Pennsylvania. He's a roughneck out there. Very roughneck guy. hillbilly, yeah. you know, pickup truck, here. chewing. Yeah. So that's important in this story because of how he reacts to what happened. Uh, we pulled in. I had uh, my Mustang. We went out drinking. I think we were at Panini's or something like that. And uh, we came back here. It was about 1 30 in the morning. It was like maybe this time of year. Fall. Yeah, late fall. late fall. And we got back, and uh, I was in my driver's seat of my Mustang, and he was in my passenger seat. He was trying to get these two girls to come back here and hang out with us and get in the hot tub and shit. So he threw the bag of weed at me. He's like, here, there's some joint papers. Roll a joint while I'm on the phone with this girl. So he's outside of my car, taking a piss with the phone up to his ear like this, and I'm trying to, I'm terrible at rolling joints. My fingers are real fat, can't do it very well. So I'm sitting there in my car rolling, trying to, and he's standing outside, like right, right, right where my car is parked now. And all of a sudden, I hear this like rustle in like the, the bushes, like right where the high activity zone normally is. And it was just a, like a sound, like maybe an animal moved or something. It wasn't that big, but I still heard it. I went back to what I was doing about three seconds later, like a huge branch, like snap, like a real big one, like something that weighed a lot had to snap with that, whatever that was. So I popped my head out of my car and like stood up to where like I just our heads. I, I looked across the top of my car and his head was standing right there. And by this time he had the phone down like this, and it was quiet again. And I looked at him and I was like, because he's like I say he's a hunter, so he knows what all everything is because he's been out in the woods for so many years. And I was like, what the fuck was that? And right when he looked at me and he said, "I," that's all he got to say was "I," and it looked like a tornado of activity just started. Like there were several large, I don't even want to say animals. I can't even describe it. The most disturbance of trees shaking and limbs breaking and just look like a, like a box, like a 15 foot by 20 foot tall box in the woods of just stuff going crazy. Just in that tiny little area, nothing over there, nothing over there, just right in this small area. The first time he told me about it, he said it was like a pack of silverback gorillas that ripped in the forest. Oh, yeah, crazy. stuff going completely wild. So my car was off because we had just gotten back and we were just going to be sitting there. So we got back in my car, both of us at the same time after watching this, and it was it looked like it was coming closer, like out of the forest, whatever it was. There was nothing visible. You just saw the trees yeah. and like stuff like... 25 feet up, like huge limbs, like shaking back and forth. So I, I, we both looked at each other and he dropped his phone outside the car and we both got in and slammed the doors and locked them. And we were just both sitting in silence, like locked the doors and just didn't know what to do. I, I couldn't go inside, like I wouldn't open the door no matter what. So we sat there and we were breathing real heavily, obviously, because we were terrified of what was going on. And I kept asking him, and I was like, who? I was like, you gotta shed a little bit of light. You're a hunter, like you spend like weeks out in this stuff at a time. I was like, what could that have been that just did that? And he was so scared, he wouldn't even look at me. He was like, yeah, I have no idea, no idea. No animals make that noise, no idea. He's like, no idea. And he just sat, Just that's all he would say. He wouldn't like really talk anything. He just was like completely like in shock. In shock. And as we're, we're sitting there, remember it's like 40 degrees out, maybe 30 degrees. So we're fogging up my windows because we're breathing inside the car and like it's like that's getting real cold out and all this, the light from the barn at this point was like on it doesn't give a lot of light but it gives off some from down here and all of a sudden we're sitting there and we think we can like see something but the windows are fogged up and neither one of us want to even move to like let it know them know that we're in the car so we were both sitting there all of a sudden the light from the barn gets like a shadow casts over the light for about 10 seconds and then it the and light, the light. 10 feet up in the air yeah oh my God. and then the light came back on this was about one in the morning i'd say one one thirty it was and then it was gone the the shadow was gone no more noises i waited till 7 30 till the sun came up without even turning the car on 
Hooper didn't get out of the car even then. He waited till like 11 a.m. Holy shit. He, he waited like nine hours. That's how scared he was. And I, when I got out, I like took like a deep breath and opened my car door and sprinted into the house and like flew inside and slammed the door behind me and ran in. That's how that's how scary it was. And he wouldn't even get out that's even freaking. with the sun up. He yeah. was still shocked inside the car. That's terrifying. Dude, it was by far the scariest thing. It was way scarier than the first thing Most that ever scary. happened. Yes. This thing was like violent, like whatever it was, it was like a violent, much, much bigger well, yeah, than us, it. like much, much bigger. Whatever it was, would have had to have been at least, if you're standing on that retaining wall, if you go up another 10 to 12 feet and you walk that way, you could block out the barn light when you pass it. But it shouldn't have been for that long of a time. Right. It was like 15 seconds went by and then it, the light came back. Jeez. So whatever this thing was, it seems like it was not only incredibly tall, but also large yeah thick or taller it Wide. took up a lot of space area yeah whatever it was was your impression that whatever was out there was one thing or a group of things after i started thinking about it i i came to the conclusion i was hoping severely that it wasn't one thing that right. was that big yeah. there had to have been more than one maybe it was like a group of bears or something or like uh i don't know i i i've talked to greg hooper about this numerous numerous times we talked about it and he's never even came up with a any kind of a reasonable conclusion at all something was obviously there making stuff go crazy but you couldn't see any a thing wasn't there but there's just so much around here so much mystery in this part of the country especially in this part of ohio it's it's a weird place to have grown up because you think you get used to it but you never get used to it when you see it it's always new for the first time I've gotten used to sitting out here at nighttime because as long as you don't go, I've pretty much learned, other than that one night with me and my friend, other than that, the only time you ever get extraordinarily frightened by something is if you go up there. Like, it doesn't ever come doesn't down. doesn't break the threshold. Anymore. Yeah, it doesn't, like, ever... Has to be invited. Right. Something. But, like, if you go up there, then your chances of incident are much, much higher. If you yeah. sit down there, then you might hear like, weird stuff and stuff that, you know, you'll hear like a, something go flying through the woods and land like a rock or something sometimes, like weird stuff. That's pretty creepy. Yeah. yeah, That's intense. Yeah, and it's just it just adds to the lore of that area. Where we are right now. Right. But just another, you know, and different phenomena. Yeah. You know, it's not, it seems like it's always changing. That's why it kind of reminds me of the it's like Skinwalker Ranch. a weird dream. Yeah. Twilight Zone stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is similar to like Skinwalker Ranch where you have a specific area, a nexus of paranormal activity, that things that I've never heard of before. Like right. the glow stick, always, man. It's always changing. Yeah, that that's way, whatever happened there was way more terrifying. Oh, yeah, it was, I mean, he said that was the most terrifying thing that ever happened to him. Well, yeah, he's there with his buddy who's a hunter, it was an avid hunter, and the, that guy's so scared that he doesn't leave the car that's, that's off and it's cold out. Like 30 degrees, doesn't turn the car on. Well, 11 a.m. too, the sun's been up for hours at oh, that yeah. point. Like, and yeah. Justin ran out, I think he said like at what, 7 or 9 yeah. or something? Yeah, left his friend in the car. Who's the hunter is the one who's in there till 11 a.m. And the last thing they heard was probably like 2.30 in the morning or something. Yeah, so he said he was in there for like nine hours or something. That terrified. Well, yeah, he, think really about creepy. it. You have something making that much racket and breaking things in the woods that, what, 15 feet from them How or close, whatever? Yeah, was it that, you said it was that close to him? Oh yeah, he said the, all the- the, the forest just shook? Yeah, basically he said it was like a, a space of the forest that was about 15 feet by 20 feet in height. He said it was like just instant. All of a sudden, it wasn't like a slow uh, growth of activity. Maybe of it was like moving. a dimensional shift or something. Maybe. But the fact that it moved across the barn to block the light that's oh, yeah. 10 right. feet or so And above. that's further into their property, the barn. You have to leave the forest, the wood line. Is that why you labeled it forest monster? Yeah. Because the forest. Because of the shadow part? Yeah. Because I could see it being, if this seems to be a hotbed of activity on the yeah. property, that shadow seems to be like it was almost some sort of physical. This is an interesting thing too, because it doesn't necessarily have to be like a shadow or a dark figure. It could be something just affecting the light around. The, and this is this is what connects or creepily correlates to the um, the other story we covered in Missing 4 and 1, which was first recorded by Bruce Maccabee. And it took place around the same time. That's what's crazy. In Lima, Ohio. Oh, in Ohio? Yeah, Western Ohio, but same state, not too far. Uh, what happened there? In there, if you guys know the stories from Missing 4 and 1, this is, I think it's called um, Predator in the Woods or something like that is the, is the name of that story. But it was a similar experience. It was about a hunter who was sitting in a tree. And you can listen to our recounting of this in the Missing 4 and 1 episode. 
But essentially it was a woman who was sitting in a tree and she was in a deer blind or whatever, just hunting. And she feels like there must be something in her eye because as she's looking straight ahead at the trees in front of her, it starts to look blurry. So she rubs her eyes, there's nothing, nothing obfuscating her view. And then she sees that whatever this is, uh, this blurry presence in the tree across from her start to move. And it, it reaches out what looks like an arm or something across to another tree and pulls itself to this other tree, this invisible... It sounds like Predator. It sounds just like Predator. And it could be the same kind of entity that's appearing here. This thing that is tearing up the trees, the forest, they can't see it, but it's not too far away, right in the, right in the tree line, and then eventually crosses over and blocks out a light that's 10 feet high. Um, and I think one of the details about that story, if I'm not mistaken, from Missing 4 and 1, is she estimated size to be about 10 feet yeah. tall. Uh, so what if this is, I mean, it could be, I've heard stories of like invisibility technology from the military, um, I mean, but something that size, uh, but that idea well, yeah, and also of refracting like a, the light, bending light to make I mean, something seemingly invisible. that's a true invisible, mystery. I mean, for sure. But then again, it goes back to like we were talking about earlier, how this seems there's a nexus area, this like old Wolf Creek area now Norton, Barberton, Clinton, you know, some of Canal Fulton, right? Um, Doylestown, obviously, with Rogues Hollow. But there's a a lore around it because of the stuff that's been going on there for a long time. And, you know, when we started doing the show, we were getting into the whole dogman phenomena, which initially sounded crazy because of the term dogman. Right. Um, but basically like a werewolf, but not transforming. Um, then you started to look into some of the experiences and the, one of the most famous accounts was in Silver Creek, which is down this road, mm -hmm. right? I mean, that's close to us. That's even closer to this property. Right. It's only maybe five minutes or seven minutes down the road to this other place. So it's, it just seems like there's there's a, a multitude of different sorts of phenomenon going on in the area. And you hear pockets of this happening all across the country. Yeah. The world, yeah. Really. Well, it's really weird, you know, coming from a city back to this place. Like you just lose all of that when you're in a densely populated urban cemented area yeah. compared to somewhere like this. There's just so much space. space still. Yeah. Yeah. Just so much stuff that you just can't explain. And what's interesting about it is like, you know, you, you would think like, well, we're rural, but I mean, we, we rural. do, we're rural, we're rural juror. We are, <laughs> we do have uh, these pockets of wilderness and of uh, secluded nature areas, but it's not like we're living in the rain. This isn't the Pacific Northwest, right? So it seems like why would these things be occurring in places like this and in places like why this around the country? Be, though? Well, I think it just goes back into the idea of not to get too out there, but interdimensional vortex stuff, thinnies, portals. portals. This is an interesting theory I've heard actually, the idea where a lot of it has to do, one theory suggests with water and marshland. Yeah. And there's an ancient legend, I forget which uh, Native American tribe it was, but this idea of swampland, marshland, and that is like a barrier between the underworld and our world. Hmm. There's a lot of that out here. There's a lot of that out here. and Low laying sort of marshland. But one interesting connection was that a lot of these places where these things seem to occur eventually get bought up by the government, become either national parks that are protected and controlled, can't develop, can't live. And then you get these tie-ins with missing 411 and people disappearing in the parks and there being no records of it. You know, maybe maybe these areas are controlled for that purpose. Oh, a conspiracy? A conspiracy behind. I'm hearing an intro segment. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so that's that's one possibility. But there's not a lot of missing people that around here. Oh, did you look at the, you seen the flyer hanging up down in the drive through Local Wadsworth man goes missing. But it doesn't happen that often. Yeah, not that we know. I'm, yeah, I'm not saying specifically that necessarily missing in all of these places, but the idea that these areas are some sort of nexus or vortex and area. maybe if there were more missing Possible. people, the government would come in and buy the land and make it a park and then we couldn't live here anymore. Well, they wouldn't be able to Eminent do that, paranormal though. domain, it's a thing. <laughs> Eminent paranormal domain. <laughs> How terrifying would that be? But no, it, it reminds me of like, you know, the strange things that have gone on in our house that we've talked about in past episodes. It's just interesting because what's our house built upon? A marsh, a swamp. Mm -hmm. It was had to be filled in. And it doesn't make sense to us because the house is brand new, you know? But if right. you if you put in the idea of like, the marshland aspects, the the link to water, well, and the, maybe the some land sort of energy. You're building on makes a bigger difference. Than Absolutely, the... but yeah, that could touch on all kinds of topics we could for go sure. Into. But thank you, Justin and Aaron. Yeah, for thank another you great very story. Much. Those were both really good stories. Yeah. yeah, and pretty darn unique. I'm still getting like images of that last one in my brain.
It does remind me like silverback gorillas just like tearing up a chunk of forest. Yeah. But that's just not possible. It reminds me of Lost. That's what I was going to say. What do they call it? The smoke If you've monster? ever seen that show, that island. Yeah. No, I know what the show you're talking about. Their property reminds you of that island just because it's random phenomena that never gets explained, which is kind of like that series. It's a lot of weird stuff happened. A lot of it never got explained. Yeah. But specifically the smoke monster in that, that show is a lot like this. And it ties into one of Aaron's stories. I don't know if we're going to play that in this episode or not, but that oh, we, misty we smoky thing he saw in Rogue's Hollow. Which is oh, right oh, down the way. Will. Oh, we will. Oh, we will. But well, we're going to take a break first. Mm-hmm. We're going to take a little break and we'll be back. <laughs> All right, guys, stick around. Once more, into the fray, the darkness. Into the day that is night. The day has ten nights. No sense. It's the end of the show. Give us a break. We're on the cusp of All Hallows Eve, and we're going to continue with our spooky stories. We're going to wrap up the uh, Duncan saga uh, as far as we have it. They have more stories. because they they're do. Just, they're just a nexus. But this next story from the Duncan crew. Yeah, this one comes from Aaron, and this, uh, if anybody's native to the uh, sort of Northeast Ohio region, uh, maybe further, I think some people come from out of state, maybe Michigan, to come check out the Rogue's Hollow area, and there's a lot of lore and a lot of history behind that area, and I think we're going to dedicate a whole episode to it, because we've had requests for that, and we'll do that eventually, but for today, this is a taste of an experience that uh, someone... A taste of an experience. (laughs) A taste that is an experience that occurred down in the dark, dark, gloomy region of Rogue's Hollow in Doylestown, Ohio. The only thing I've ever been scared of at Rogue's Hollow, I went down there a thousand times growing up. We'd go down there and and just party, hang out, go down there with girls, whatever, and we'd park on Crybaby Bridge or the whole area of Rogue's Hollow. I mean, you grew up here, you know how we just explored it. And I saw something finally that scared me at Rogue's Hollow. I was down there with four friends, and I'll never forget it. I'll never, never forget where everyone was sitting in the car, who was with us. And we were sitting facing the road on Crababy Bridge with my friend's car turned off, like everybody did usually. My friend Alexa noticed it first. She was like, what is that, Duncan? It's creepy. And I was sitting next to her in the back seat, and I looked over, and this had all of our attention, all five of us. And I don't know what it was, but it, it was definitely the most scared I've ever been in my life. It was small, it was like a moving smoke pattern, like had a form to it, but it was it was unidentifiable for sure. And it was rolling along the riverbank, but getting closer the whole time. And as it got, I'd say, you know, 50 feet, 60 feet away, you could definitely see eyes and some type of face to it. The front of it was rounded more, and it had almost like the marshmallow man, you know how there's like sections of like white blubber or whatever. It had like little sections to it, like a, one of those cone dog toys. And then the back kind of trailed off into more of a tail look. It was definitely not solid. Like you was definitely like, I don't know, I don't, I don't know how really to describe it. It was a concentration of fog or smoke, but it, it had too much form to be that. It was definitely a shape of something. Once I saw a, a whatever a humanoid face in it or eyes and that was enough. I, I stopped looking at it because it felt, felt bad. It was terrifying. That's when we all just panicked and went crazy. My cousin's a pretty badass dude. He's not scared of much. And he was in the front seat. He was shaking his body so bad that one of his shoes flew off while we were driving away and landed in the back seat. There's lights up toward the road and then there's lights by the little museum place they have there. But those are, you've been down there plenty of times. They're like a cast, like a weird yellow, creepy kind of light. This was down in the riverbank, and it was definitely way more white light and illuminated. I mean, it was obviously not something being cast from right. the lights that surround there. It was definitely foreign. And the, just the way it was moving was so erratic and strange. Nothing moves like that. Like it, That's how it caught all of our attention. As soon as we all made eye contact, just the way it was moving, it was, it was definitely something, I don't know. It was true terror. I never knew true terror until I saw that. I really didn't. Yeah, I think there are things that just live 
in Rogue's Hollow in yeah. this area. Just reminds me of like an undulating ghost spirity smoke caterpillar. There's something like, about that sort of geography where things are just, it kind of reminds me of where that that monster in West Virginia that we, we drove by, we didn't realize we were even the in Flatwoods that. Flatwoods monster. Flatwoods monster. We didn't realize we were in that area until we were visiting our friends whose mother was dying. And there was in the trailer park, there was this, it was a giant wooden sculpture of the Flatwoods monster. And I was like, are we in Flatwoods, uh, West Virginia? But it's that same feeling if you're in, you're deep, deep down in this glen. You're just surrounded by hills, rolling hills. So daylight doesn't last very long. It seems to sort of capture an energy in there. And that's a lot how Rogue's Hollow feels to me. It's sort of just like, you, you're when you're down there, you're in another world. The yeah. underworld. If you think like if different energies have weight, in a sense, they would sink. Settle down darker, on the bottom. That's, you always find things in the basement. You know, that's where you get that's a lot true. of ghost activity, creepy. Hell is underground. Hell is also downstairs. <laughs> that's true. Yeah, that's a creepy story. I mean, it's brief, a brief little short nugget of paranormal activity. Have you guys there. ever had an experience down there in Rogue's Hall that was that no. so strange? My favorite story uh, from Rogue's Hollow was just Jared's story when he <laughs> drove his girlfriend at the time down there and everyone knows about the lore down there and the hauntings there's a lot of them and they get down to the stop sign at the base of the hollow and it's all dark and quiet and creepy and jared looks at her with dead eyes and says get out <laughs> and then she's like ah, it's funny and he's like get out unlocks the doors and she gets out and i think uh their relationship ended after that uh, it did not go over well you made for a good story though because that is terrifying and i don't think jared really <laughs> understood the weight of that or maybe he just didn't like her that much and it was a good way to end was it, it uh, like he joking he, he was joking yeah but it just didn't go i over think part well of him just wanted to see her response so, like he made her get out and like you're away for like he five minutes made her get out well he would like physically force her but it was you know like get out and, and then she, she got out she got yeah. out and Were then they he drove away. just alone together yep Jared, that's really weird. <laughs> Jared's that. got a Jared's got a big heart. He does, and just He's a sweet guy. <laughs> but no, uh, the thing about these sorts of places around the country that are that are very urban legend engulfed, people go down there all the time from all over the country to experience certain things. Right. Legend tripping, legend tripping, and I think because of that, it seems like this is bogus because when you've got so many people going down so often, there's not every time you go down a response to your your trip there. Right, can't always happen. Right, but. Why would it? Why would it happen every time somebody went down? Well, it's not like a automated, uh, you know, spooky witch sculpture you got at Home Depot that every time somebody drives by, it goes, <laughs> trigger it. Yeah. But when I went down, there was only one experience and it was just, it was very subtle. We got to the railroad tracks where we heard there was supposed to be some sort of activity that happened to these tracks. And then all of my lights started going off and then my car shut down and... That was basically it. The like ghost I, I eventually got started again, but it was just like it was just a power, weird power surge. That never happened in my, in my Dodge Airy station wagon before or after that. It was just at that one point sitting at the railroad tracks where it's supposed to happen. Where it's supposed to happen. It's so. like a UFO thing. Yeah, it actually kind of felt like that um, scene in Close Encounters where like the lights go crazy and then the car dies. It's pretty much exactly how it happened. Spooky. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you hear so often that lights dim or batteries drain right before an entity manifests. That's true. That's kind of the idea. Yeah. It's like maybe it was, something was trying to appear and was surging your uh, battery, or you just didn't take care of your car. That could have been makes it a too. lot of sense. That could have been it. It's happened. Um, but yeah. Sp 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 spooky. Ooh. <laughs> Remix. S super spooky. S s s s s spooky. Yeah, we'll have to do an episode just on Rogue Solid because we can actually do a little legend tripping ourselves down there and maybe record an episode because there's a lot of stories. You got the ghost tracks, you got the, the devil in the tree that has since been cut down, the witch's triangles down there. Yeah. All kinds of stuff. Some story about a guy with an axe in a barn. I don't know. But listeners out there, any stories you guys want to submit your own personal true experiences, feel free to submit them and we can put them all in and make a good map of experience. Yes. Yes. So what's next up here? Let's let's uh, crank another experience out. We got Zayden. We got Zayden on the uh, on Scotty, deck here, you mean? Scotty. Scotty is his real name, apparently. We're outing you, Zayden, which I think is okay. I asked you, but I asked you really late and I didn't hear back yet. And his, we didn't say his last name, so it doesn't matter. So Scotty's experience now coming up is an interesting one. This one is a, it's a, also kind of a lifetime story. It sounds like it's happened since they were kids. So this story takes place in their home. It involves a shadow person, also involves a bit of a dream warrioring. Dream warrior. Yeah, calling back to uh, Nightmare on Elm Street, Freddy Krueger, oh, you know, the really? dream warriors. Oh yeah. Yeah. What was that the third movie in the saga? Okay, so these are the Zayden Chronicles. Uh, this takes place with him and his sister, Jess. They both sent the story in together, so we'll hear accounts from both sides. So the first encounter is going to come from Jess's perspective and her experience when she was a kid. Here we go. I don't remember a lot about 
the shadow people when we were kids. I do remember a specific incident being upstairs. Uh, we are currently recording this in our childhood home. So upstairs from where we are was our bedrooms. Scotty was on one side and I was on the other uh, with my sister Tiffany. I remember laying in bed. It's about, I want to say, 2 to 3 o'clock in the morning. Oh, um, the time. I think mm-hmm. the first time I saw him was at the foot of my bed. And it was just this guy. It was just a shadow guy. I didn't see any eyeballs. I didn't see, I couldn't make out a face. It was just a shadow of a man standing at the edge of my bed. And I remember gasping. And then I remember dad, dad. you screaming dad. for dad. dad. And then I remember dad. us getting freaked out and running downstairs. And then I remember seeing him again in our backyard through the door wall a couple of days later. Backyard, that's interesting. Yeah, so that was her initial encounter. Why does there have to be so many scary things in the world? <laughs> that's what makes life interesting. Until they suck you into hell. Or Shang Tsung's domain. <laughs> well, hopefully that doesn't happen. What are they all doing, though? Just hanging around. They're just hanging they around. They all got stuff. They all got jobs. They're just doing their job. I just don't want to end up as one. I know. Neither do I. What, a shadow person? Yeah, or anything that's stuck here. Yeah. Just slightly out of the nothing's, realm. Nothing's forever. Okay, Chris, knowing of things. <laughs> nothing's forever. That's my belief, too. If we get stuck here, that I still think there's nothing's always... Nothing's forever. There's always a way out. That's what I feel like. Keep telling yourself. Just got to look. All right, so this next clip is beginning Zayden's perspective on that encounter. Her brother. Yeah, I remember, I remember a completely different story. I, I remember specifically my sisters and I, we were all playing upstairs and um, my mom called us down for dinner and it was my sister Tiffany, me, and then Jessica here behind me. And as we were walking down the stairs, I turned to talk to you. And then when I turned back, I see the shadow person in the window and I say, hey, Tiffany, what are you doing? What are you doing? Tiffany's like, I'm downstairs. I'm downstairs. I turn, see her, turn back up. There he is, turning around. And I freaked out and ran called for dad and whatnot. So that was his angle on the story. So that's kind of a, a trope that you hear too, the idea of you're with a group of people and you're talking to someone and then you realize shortly after that that's someone's not there and it's someone else in the room. Yeah. Was, was his experience in that story, did it correlate to her experience at the same time? Yeah, so that's where the confusion was. And they cleared up in the follow-up in the next clip, but she had the experience and she couldn't remember if uh, she thought that Zayden was in the room or Scotty was in the room and turned the light on and then they called for dad but he remembers it as being might have been his other sister tiffany because he was downstairs at the time um so they might be two different accounts that they kind of merged in their memory as you do as kids but but the bottom line is he saw the same thing she had seen at the same yeah this is an entity that seems to be in their home yeah that they both are experiencing i have a, a good buddy named mikey if he's listening right now but he has a daughter that just constantly is i mean it seems to happen a lot where she is just encountering this kind of stuff. Really? Like, mm-hmm. Like what? Shadow people or just like... It reminds me of that that last story. Just like weird stuff like that all the time where he has to kind of like... Calm her down? Yeah, like talk to her. Be like this, you know, this is not, you know. But Mike, Mike's along the same lines. I mean, he believes in this stuff too. Yeah. So I don't know exactly how he rationalizes it to his daughter. Right. But you can't be like, yeah, it's real. And uh, yeah. yeah. How freaky for a parent. Yeah. that believes in this stuff. I know, right? I feel like most parents, in the stories I've heard at least, that when they experience this, and if they're open-minded, they don't just totally blow off their kid, which sadly I think happens a lot. Yeah, like, oh, I think it happens a lot. And I right. think this stuff happens a lot to kids because they do have that open door sort of sensitivity. sensitivity. Well, their their filter hasn't been developed enough to like just block shit out. Yeah. Um, but I think the parents that do or that are aware or that have had their own experiences. And a lot of this gets passed down through generations. They're more aware, more open. A lot of the time I think they just, which is probably what I would do too, is just you would tell your child it's not real, at least until they can grapple with it. And then you just protect them as much as possible, get them out of that I place. Don't, yeah, or, I don't know if I would say it's not real. Though. I mean, unless you have it. It's got to be such an individual experience. But I would imagine like, unless you have something else to tell them after that, like a way to actually help them with the situation, just saying like, yeah. Well, yeah, that's right. something in your room. You would have, have a good to, night. <laughs> you would have to have some sort of a way to deal with it. You mm-hmm. couldn't yeah. just be like, yeah, it's real. And good luck with right. your sleep. Good night, honey. That's where I think uh, <laughs> the best advice to give your kid or the best thing you can do for your kid in that situation or what I would do paranormal is parenting by give, Jeremy 
you yeah, give them paranormal parents. <laughs> well, you hear so often these stories that like <laughs> that would be a good uh, good spinoff. Yeah, yeah, paranormal parenting. We all have kids. That's what we're gonna do. <laughs> yeah. It'll be the spinoff. Um, a lot of these entities seem to respond to strength of will. The idea that you you are powerful, you're in control yeah, of this exactly. domain. So if you give your kids something, and I hear the story a lot where like, well, your, your Teddy's here with you and Teddy is a protector. Yeah. And you you have a bit of like, or you can or you go the religious route. God, yeah. Yeah, you can. I would, that, I think that's probably a little more power behind something like that. And I, But I think it comes down to belief and faith and will. And if you have those things and you say, this thing has no power over me, I'm living, this thing is not in my dimension, my, my realm. Uh, it can't hurt me as long as I believe this and I have strength. Yeah, it seems to be the reoccurring pattern is that it's the fear that it's feeding off. It makes you feel as if you have no control because you don't know what it is. But once you realize that you you actually have the physical control in this physical world, then you really do have, you have that over them, that power. Yeah, and once you exert that confidence, then it seems to be, often seems to be controllable. Not I every also, situation, there, I think there are very dramatic situations right. where it Possession. isn't and people end, there ends up being tragedy because right. nothing helps. Those are more demonic situations, I think. But but yeah, it is it is that, that strength of will. That, and I think it's also, they might lose interest as well because if we know what we believe we might know about these things, the feeding on fear, go look at Monsters, Inc., which is a silly example, but it is it holds true to this idea that these things so often seem to be feeding on your fear. Ah, real monsters. Sleep paralysis, you're frozen and they just seem to be absorbing and delighting in that fear energy. And when you remove fear from the situation because you have faith in something. And it's you, like It. Yeah. The movie It. Where yeah. they, this is battery acid. They finally realize that they... They have the power of lies in them not being afraid. Exactly. And I think that I think that's true to like to the heart of this, whatever this phenomenon is. Mm -hmm. It's just like picking up girls. Like you have the confidence. Like yeah. you'll banish those demons. What? That is a good comparison. I mean, I get that. <laughs> Wait, what? I was making a joke about picking up women. You yeah. know? It's if all about the confidence. It's basically. all about the confidence. Oh, okay. So whether you're ghost busting or or Hooking catching up, a yeah. lady. Or seducing a woman. That's right. Okay, let's go to the next clip. This is the uh, follow-up. It's going to give a little more information on their uh, experience here in this home. I remember Dad getting called upstairs because of the shadow guy. Yeah. I don't remember if that was 100% the night that I had seen him at the edge of my bed. I remember when I did see him at the edge of my bed, I couldn't move. All right, so you had sleep paralysis. Oh, yeah, 100% for sure. It had to be. I remember not being able to move. I couldn't really talk. I just kind of stared for about you know, um, about a minute or so. And then I blinked and that's what kind of like brought me out of it. And I gasped. And then I think I, I want to say that you turned on your light and I couldn't see the guy anymore. And I, I ran downstairs. And if you guys want to get um, a little extra creeped out, go to beliefhole.com, look at the show notes of this episode. And Zayden and Jess provided an, an artist rendering of sorts from their friend Harley, who made this depiction of what this thing looked like. So this must have been a pretty serious event yeah. that happened. And it happened, it seems like it happened throughout their lives to an extent. John, right. here, here's a picture Whoa, that they sent in. Super creepy. Yeah, so their friend Harley uh, created this depiction of what it, what it would have looked like. I'm guessing that's Zayden or Jess's actual room. And... Looks a little bit like the shadow of Bigfoot. It's a gigantic. Well, and these shadow <laughs> figures are always gigantic. Yeah, it you know? looks like a very large. Imagine uh, that shadow standing figure. over you, and you're a small, you know, girl, uh, frozen, and just that fear that you would have. That's pretty cool. Yeah, that was produced by their friend Harley and Jess uh, Scotty, or Zayden's sister, said that when she saw this picture, it was super eerie because of how real it was, how accurate mm -hmm. to her experience. Um, yeah, so check that on our website. And with that, we'll jump to the final clip of their saga. Beforehand, there was kind of a spooky bit that kept happening. Like, the lights fell out of the kitchen. Yeah, I remember that. Um, my bed shook a lot. Mm -hmm. like, you know, my mom always told me, like, oh, no, it's just earthquakes. It's just earthquakes. Sure, Mom. It's only my bed. <laughs> I think I remember one night you getting up and freaking out because your bed was, you were screaming that your bed was shaking. But mm -hmm. I know that I... I believed you. I don't think Tiffany believed you at the time. Uh, Tiffany was never a, a believer. I think she believes in it now. I don't think she believed when we were kids, but well, I definitely believed in it. I think the only thing that all three of us experienced was that dream. A dream where, like, some person broke into the house or whatever. I hid in the little cubby up in the attic, mm -hmm. and everyone else just died. That was a really, <laughs> really, really bad dream because it was the shadow person. We never, I never saw a face. In my dream, I never saw a face. <laughs> But it was the shadow guy, and I remember trying to hide, and I could hear everybody dying. And then it got to me, 
and that's terrifying right before something happened i woke up like he was standing in front of me and then i just remember waking up in a cold sweat i was hyperventilating almost i was crying and i remember going down and sleeping at the foot of mom and dad's bed that night and i was 15 <laughs> i slept at the foot of their bed like a dog <laughs> i was so scared and then i remember waking up for school the next day and I was so tired because I was so afraid to go to sleep. I think I might have stayed home that day from school because I don't... Stay I home with the afraid. shadow man? <laughs> I played sick. I think that's about it, right? Yeah, I think that's all we got for this segment of spooky stories. <laughs> well, boys, I hope you really liked this story. To everyone else out there, subscribe to the Bully Pulp Podcast. Good advice, Aiden. Good advice, Aiden. <laughs> um, but yeah. That ending, yeah, that was really creepy. Yeah, and it's it was, not only was it a terrifying dream, hear your family dying. You're like, that's, I can visually, uh, I want to do sound design of that, but I'm kind of afraid. Do it anyway. It's going to be dark. But <laughs> it's pretty dark. It's yeah. like the Amityville horror, you know. Yeah. Hearing other people dying, like, as you know, they're getting, that's just, it's I mean, that, that happens in real life. Too. I know. That's, oh, yeah. that's, that's freaky disturbing. part. Disturbing. Yeah. But additional to that is, that it was a shared dream. Yeah. That they well, all had it. Really weird. And I think I, I think from what I got from it was that it was a precursor to the actual shadow person manifesting. It reminds me, it's like a Freddy Krueger-esque oh, situation yeah. because it was like this thing let in their know, dreams. Let you know he's there. Exactly. The... Get the fear going and then you can start to manifest in their actual reality in a sense. Yeah. Well, so much for sleeping for me tonight. <laughs> yeah, it's funny actually because that reminds me of, there's a, a show on Netflix that's really good, but it's a French show called... Marianne or Marion, but it's about basically this girl who they accidentally conjure this witch when she's young, and then she ends up having to basically write stories about the witch as she gets older or the witch kills people in her life. But it's the same idea of like you give it power, it finds you, then it wants you to talk about it or let other people know about it, and then it grows in power. Yeah, like Freddy Krueger. Right. Or any other thing that it needs that energy from you. Or it, even in it, that same sort of idea, like you don't forget about me. Oh, yeah. It brings it back. Yeah. You can't talk about it. Um, creepy. Lightning strike. But yeah, I thought that was a really good example of something that happens in her family, you know, where you have this entity yeah. that's plaguing in a, a group of people. And obviously it affected them a lot because they think about it to this day. Exactly. But yeah, thank you guys both so much for that fantastic story. Good luck to Jess. We hope uh, you had Scott a good time uh, reliving it with each other yeah. in your old house. They were in their... Yeah, they were back in their uh, childhood home. That's the way to, to do record it. that story for us. That's cool. Thank you guys so much for that. Let's take a break and we come back. We'll, we'll wrap up with some uh, quick write-ins of some spooky stuff. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was a rival Aaron for demon monster sounds. <laughs> that was pretty good. It's like a pig squeal. <laughs> Welcome back. Welcome back from the final break of our final episode of our first season. Why are you talking like an Into NPR spooky oh, is that? I thought that was like a spooky voice. Yeah, if you're... If you're Welcome ready. back. There you go. Enough. I wonder if a hundred years from now, ghosts will be wearing... Like, like I'm, I'm waiting to see like somebody from like wearing Jinko jeans, like walking down the street as a ghost. Yeah, that's you know? a weird thing about ghosts. Like, why don't we have ghosts that are... You never see ghosts wearing shorts. That's a weird thing. What about jorts? Or especially jorts. jorts. What are jorts? Jean shorts. They're jean shorts. Yeah. How do you know? How, have you, you seen know why? all the ghosts You know why? Because you won't be caught dead in a pair of jorts. <laughs> wow. Right? Crickets, please. Nice dad. That was good. Good dad that joke. That was a little more clever than a dad joke. That wasn't even a dad joke. They didn't even have a punchline. Yeah, that was pretty bad. Because you wouldn't be caught dead because you're a ghost. I oh, get it. okay. Yeah. There's a bit of a pun. You didn't get that? Yeah. It was just so dumb I didn't get it. Okay, everybody was laughing really hard. That was great, Chris. They're laughing all the way to the morgue. So, uh, oh my gosh. <laughs> That's not even, I don't even understand that. a joke. Now you're saying words that are 
It's Halloween related to spookiness. It's Halloweenish. All right, welcome back, guys. We're gonna wrap up this episode with a couple write-ins from uh, some of our listeners. We're gonna get into Gremlins, guys. Because that does... We're not getting into anything. All right, sorry. We're we are, ending. We are touching on Gremlins while launching... John's ready. We're getting into something new for you. We are retouching on the Gremlin. We're touching up the final touch-ups. Okay, final touch-ups of the episode. Into the, into the Gremlins. <laughs> getting into some Gremlins. <laughs> sorry. We're going we're gonna, to uh, glance over some Gremlin activity, guys. So this comes from our good friend, Gert, a frequent CastBox hey, Gert. commenter. Hey, Gert. We love you. Um... So, for those of you who don't believe in gremlins, <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm about to burst You're your You're a garbage bubble. man. You're a garbage man. I'll play a, <laughs> play a gar- clip. What's wrong with garbage men? Well, you're going to pick up the mess because you are a garbage man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Rumsfeld. Bring it back to the burbs. The burbs. Great film. Where are you going, Pinocchio? <laughs> <laughs> so many good moments in that movie. <laughs> sorry. Sorry for those of you who don't know what we're talking about. Just Go wa- watch, just the, watch movie. the burbs. Just watch the burbs and just stop trying to dissect it and just enjoy it. Yeah. Stop it. We'll do a watch along. Yeah, it's, it's a great Halloween movie, guys. Go watch it. it Especially is. if you live in a cul-de-sac. Yes. Classic. I've never seen that. I've never seen anybody drive their garbage down to the street and then bang the hell out of it with a stick on. I've never seen that. I've never <laughs> seen that. Well, you do cool. it if there's a body in your garbage. Ray. Ray Finkel. <laughs> Is his name Finkel? No. no. Oh. Okay, let's All finish right. this show. All right, this comes from Gert. Uh, he left this comment on CastBox. Um, thank you, Gert. Here goes. This happened in an older 1900s house in Tacoma, Washington. So my mom has this weird story from when she was a child. She and my uncle shared a room on the second floor, and one night these evil little elves appeared in their room, harassing them as they pretended to sleep. She said one pulled down the covers she was hiding under and grinned at her with sharp little teeth. They threw their toys around and caused a mess, then chased each other with a kitchen knife, both finally jumping out the second window. The weird part is, while my uncle tells me it was just a weird shared dream, my aunt remembers an argument between my grandpa and the neighbor lady who came over in the middle of the night, very upset, to tell him how his horrible children were up to no good, jumping out of windows, chasing each other with a knife, and causing a ruckus in the yard. Pretty weird that you guys brought up gremlins and goblins in your previous episode. As I heard this story years ago, but just asked my aunt about it for the first time last Saturday and found out that additional bit about the neighbor. Gremlins are weird. I'm going to have some nightmares tonight. Some gremlin nightmares? Maybe. Well, that's the thing. Again, shared dream. That's like, do you remember the episode recently we did? Yeah, Chris and I had a shared gremlin nightmare staying at my grandma's house. What is it with its shared dream? They're screen memories. It sounds like screen memories. For yeah, What's a screen become, memory? It's like alien abduction, that sort of thing, where it's like, oh, I dreamt about, you know, a gremlin coming into my window and oh. taking me out to play. And it's like a screen memory to, like, shield you from the actual reality of what's occurring, whether it's demons or aliens or whatever. The idea is that they put something in your mind that seems familiar Innocuous. to make you comforted. Yeah. But it is somewhat similar to what's actually occurring. See, that sounds like a conspiracy started by gremlins, so you wouldn't believe in them, and you just attribute them to aliens and demons. Uh, that's weird. It's weird turnaround. Yeah, I don't, I don't appreciate that. Well, gremlins are real. <laughs> so Stray Wolf responded, Gert, who would have thought the movie Gremlins and Critters may have some truth behind it? Well, Stray Wolf, we do think that there is some truth behind these movies. <laughs> uh, you got that gremlin clip? Yeah. You did this impersonation on a previous episode, I think. Is it the hormone one? Yeah, it's hormones. When gremlins get injected. This is hormones. hilarious. Gremlins too. If you haven't seen this, go watch it. But this is good. I wanna talk a little bit about what's going on in this room <laughs> because I think there are some fascinating ramifications here for the future. When you introduce genetic material of research quality to a life form such as ours, which is possessed of a, a sort of, a, I hesitate to use the word, atavism, but let us... <laughs> Part at the beginning. Yes, the yeah. <coughs> I Still, Gremlin. Wanna... 
talk, talk a little, a little about what's going on in this room today. <laughs> That's such a great scene. So the gremlin basically drinks some potion. No, in. he gets injected. No, he drinks something. Oh. I think I think it was CRISPR. Oh, he gets injected first, and another one drinks it later. I think this. I remember the gremlin comes out of the behind and drinks something. That's that's right after the scene. Another gremlin drinks this this flat. I just watched it on the YouTube. Oh, okay. Mad scientists that I guess want to use gremlins as like a military weapon, perhaps, which makes total sense because is they, this a sequel? Is the gremlins sounds like a yeah. sequel? Gremlins too. It's around Christmas time when this is happening. So is the first one. It's weird. They're Christmas oh, yeah. movies. It is weird. It's kind of creepy. It's yeah. It's like uh, that one movie. What movie? That one large demon creature that oh, jumps. Oh, Krampus? Across. Krampus. Yes. Uh, Such a or good Nightmare movie. Before Christmas. Also a Halloween Christmas crossover. Yeah. Rare Exports. That was a great that's Krampus great. movie. Icelandic. It's demons trying to take over the lovely holiday of Christmas. <laughs> but speaking of military involvement with gremlins, that's like a traditional story, right? Like you have in World War II, there was a Bugs Bunny clip. I don't know if you want to play it, but it was basically oh, gremlins, Bugs yeah. Bunny meeting a gremlin. And the, the cartoon was made in 1943. And it was all about like, you know, gremlins are uh, infesting the... Uh, like the Fuselage? Pl- the planes. Yeah, the, the military equipment to, to basically destroy... That was, a, that was a huge belief back then. A huge, yeah. huge... It was like they really believed that there were these little things that would come on board and or they were in the they lived in the sky. And weird can remember would, that one show? Twilight Zone. Yes. When yeah. he looks out the window There's and they're like ripping thing, off the something on the wing. It's William Shatner in the original series. And then the movie it was uh, John Lithgow. John Lithgow. Yeah. That was, he's that like was looking out the window and things just like ripping. By things. the way, we that were gonna so scary. By the way, for this episode, we were gonna my I was gonna do like half the episode on like movie curses. We had enough That'll stuff be another to episode. Into. But Twilight Zone, John, two kids burned in the making of that Twilight Zone movie with Ooh, uh, John Lithgow. Two uh, Asian children burned a lot. Really awful. Yeah, it's That's one sad. of the cursed movies. We'll do an episode on cursed movies because they're like The Crow has some fascinating oh, yeah. connections. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. So that'll be a, a future episode. But yeah, what's interesting, a weird correlation connection there, mm-hmm. synchronicity perhaps, mm-hmm. is that uh, in Gremlins, in the first Gremlins, uh, the guy who's talking about, oh, Gremlins, yeah, they were in our planes in World War II, destroying the our techno, you know, our engines and everything. Gremlins. You gotta watch out for no foreigners because they plant Gremlins in their machinery. That's the same Gremlins brought down our planes in the big one, World War II. And that actor in that scene was the same guy as the garbage man from The Burbs. Oh, really? Oh, the clip yeah. you played, it said. He's in like every awesome like 90s horror. He's in The Howling. He always plays like that weird kind of like guy with like a New York accent. Is that the, the gray, straggly haired guy? Uh, no, 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 not Bruce Stern, not the main guy. The guy who, the garbage man. When Bruce Stern says, garbage you're going to pick it up because you're the garbage man. It's the guy he's pointing at. He's a great um, character. Yeah, actually, we used his voice in another little montage we made where we did the one with the howling with the werewolves. Oh, yeah, bullet, like, so They're bullets. like cockroaches. It's the same actor. You can't get rid of them. Anyway, last story. Neither here nor there. Ties right into the gremlin stuff. This is from Marsha. Marsha, thank you for the submission. When I was a young child, around four to five years old, I had the room closest to the living room and the kitchen. It was the first room in the hallway. I would be awoken by the sounds of pots and pans falling in the sink in the middle of the night. I would run down the hall to my parents' room and wake my mom up. Mommy, mommy, I hear the dishes in the sink again. She would tell me to wake up my dad. So I would go to my dad's side of the bed and say, Daddy, daddy, I hear the dishes in the sink again. He would get up and walk me to the kitchen and turn on the light to show me there was nothing there. No pots or pans in the sink or anything out of place. He would put me back to sleep. This happened until I was around six years old, and I shared a room with my sister because my dad's friend moved in. My sister's mom was further down the hall. It seemed to stop then. Not sure if it was because I became older, because we gained a roommate, or because I was no longer alone. Later in life, I asked my dad if he remembered when I was younger, and I used to wake him up often because I would hear pots and pans crashing. He told me he remembered, and that he too heard them. That house I lived in... He heard him? Really? he, He also heard the pots and pans, yeah. That house I lived in during that time was a new house. My dad had it built for us, so we were the only owners at the time. It was in Apple Valley, California. Interesting. Yeah, and her, her experience goes on throughout decades of time, and we can get into that in another episode, Dude, but that ties right into the Gremlin stuff. That's so weird because when I read the definition of the goblin in uh, the Bell Witch episode... Yeah, it's the same thing. It's literally... Banging pots and pans was one of the descriptions. Yeah. Like it, that, I don't know why they're attracted. I wouldn't have to watch a Disney movie after this before I go to sleep. <laughs> oh, you want to get deeper into you the know darkness? Those are all based on really dark gremlins okay, and goblins. What can I and watch that's lighthearted? It's always sunny in Philadelphia. There you go. That's mm-hmm. better than Disney. Disney's dark. Disney's got a dark, yeah, dark do. history. We'll do an episode on Disney and its uh, its evil underbelly because it's rich and deep. 
rich yep. and deep. Indeed. But yeah, those are all the stories we have for this episode, guys. Yeah, thanks for all the submissions. Um, guys, keep sending them in because even though the Halloween season is over, you know, it doesn't have to be a ghost. Halloween never ends for us. It's yeah. true. And it can be, you know, an alien encounter. It can be a monster in the woods. It can be a... Yeah, it can be a uh, gremlin in your closet. It can be a, you maybe you maybe you went to Starbucks and you got a coffee and someone said, "Hey, you were just in here. That's weird, yeah. but you had red eyes." I don't know. No, nope, that's situations. not interesting at all. Um, How is that not interesting? That would be interesting. A demon doppelganger just walks into Starbucks before you. That's not interesting. Oh, I get out of town. I guess so. I guess so. Well. That about does it that for about us. Does it. <laughs> if, you, if you guys haven't heard, uh, we have a couple write-ins that we haven't played yet. Uh, we've got a great UFO write-in we'll get to in a future episode. Yeah, Trisha, I got some stories from her. Um, Did we say that we're taking a break? Because we briefly touched on it. Okay, to be clear, for our listeners, guys, we are going to take, uh, what, a few weeks, a month off? Uh, November, I think, is going to be our month to really... We want to grow the whole, and they always say it's got to be 70% marketing and reach out and 30% content, and we do about 95% content and yeah. very little marketing. We rely on you guys, your word of mouth. That's what's been spreading the show, and we so much appreciate it. But next month, we're going to take off, and we're going to really get deep but, into it. But if you want to become a patron, we are going to do an episode or two of Patreon releases right. during this period. Yeah, and those will be a more, little more off the cuff, a little more cuff. bantery, but if you miss the whole... Sign up as a patron and we will deliver. Oh, and one more thing before we go, guys. If you guys are in the Seattle area around November 3rd or whatnot, don't be. Get out. Why? Because there is a major conspiracy out there about November 3rd, and I think it involves the Seahawks Stadium, there being a major catastrophe. There's a lot of predictive programming and a YouTube video that really points all this stuff out. I'll link it in the show notes. You should I'm probably saying, say, Astro probably won't happen. Well, if you just want to be safe, maybe just take a bus out of town on November 3rd. Here you're fine. Does it have to do with the stadium? The why, stadium. Why would, it, why would you have to get out of Seattle? Well, it's going to be a major, mm-hmm. major event. According sure. to this conspiracy, I don't know how this guy did it, but somehow he tracked back through. You know, The Simpsons always has predictive programming and all uh-huh. these things. It could, I'm sure it's probably not going to happen. But Jeremy, but, what, do you, what do you think the percentage this is uh, something is going to happen? 50 50. Everything's 50 50. 50 50. Everything's 50 50. 0.05. Because anything could happen. What if it did happen? <laughs> I know, right? So I'm warning you guys now. Uh, you know, if you if you got an opportunity to take How a vacation, how many people get on a bus right now? And oh, just, they're gonna they're gonna send you the bill for their flight. November third, just uh, take a break from uh, maybe, Seattle. Maybe maybe just have some food or something on hand. Yeah, and just don't be near the stadium. I'm not sure how big the catastrophe is going to be. It may, may involve a blimp. It may <laughs> wow. involve a blimp crashing into the stadium. There's a. I know what you're talking about. Yeah. I mean. Yeah, but every time one of these things comes down the pike, it's all it never happens. But you, you know, you see like the the 9/11 predictive programming and mm-hmm. Simpsons and all this stuff, and in the Trump. That's the point. It's always after the fact. But this that's what's crazy is this guy somehow managed to find all of these clips Who's from this guy? previous movies and stuff. I don't remember, but I will link in the show notes. But it it breaks down all the stuff in a way that like, I don't know how, I don't know how he tracked back and found all of these things that connect. But even you told me there's a lot of like, not very connected things that he tries to make connections There's definitely a handful of things that are kind of a stretch, but even if if 1% is real, then uh, you're dead if you're in Seattle. So just- uh, Yeah, the second coming is happening directly after that too. (laughs) Is that true? (laughs) You you gotta stand on your roof. I'll believe it if you tell me. (laughs) That's my modus operandi. Jeremy. It's at least worth looking into. Mountains or giants? Oh, that's that's in the next episode, guys. Tartaria, Tartaria. ancient uh, mines being Anyways, volcanoes. happy Halloween, guys. Yeah. Happy Enjoy Halloween, Enjoy your guys. Halloween. I hope your kids are, I hope you put them in decent costumes. You know, I hope you made them. That's a weird thing to say. Well, that's always that's what I wanted when I was thing. young. Decent <laughs> costume. That's true. The most important thing is that they're racially sensitive costumes. Yeah, dress appropriately and not appropriationally. Guys, <laughs> just be sensitive. You know what? If aware. you want to be Moana, be Moana. Or, yeah. well, is that her name? Moana? Yeah, I think so. All right, guys. All right, guys, we love you so much. And uh, stick around. Uh, join us in Patreon in November. And if not, we'll see you in December. And just remember, tonight, keep the lights on. I will. <laughs> <laughs> All right. See you later. Bye, Good guys. Night. What are ghosts? And why do they keep repeating the same actions over and over again? It might very well be a poltergeist intrusion. Hauntings can go on for years. You were saying about poltergeist? People have been seen.
seeing and hearing ghosts for thousands of years. What are ghosts? And why do they keep repeating the same actions over and over again? Hauntings can go on for years and years and years. It might very well be a poltergeist intrusion. People have been seeing and hearing ghosts.